In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create all of these low poly city assets in Blender. Now I did want to create more city assets because there are so many different cool city assets that could be created, but this tutorial is already pretty long with just creating all of these assets. I believe this breaks the record for the longest single video that I've created on my channel. So in this tutorial, I will show you how to create all of these city assets. And this tutorial is pretty long, so if you'd like to learn how to create just a single asset, then I will have timestamps in the video description and you can just check out a certain asset if you have a specific one that you'd like to learn how to create. And if you'd like to help support me and my YouTube channel, you can purchase the finished tutorial files on my Gumroad store and you can also get it if you join my Patreon. And then also before we continue, I wanted to give a huge thanks to Sketchfab for sponsoring this video. Sketchfab has a 3D model store where you can purchase 3D models and assets. You can preview the models in Sketchfab's online 3D model view. Use the model inspector to preview the wireframe, matte cap textures, and more before you purchase. You can also upload your own 3D models on the platform, and you can even apply to sell your own 3D models. Check out Sketchfab with the link below. Now before we get started creating all the assets, I did want to let you know about some resources online that I'm going to be using. So to get some nice lighting and reflections, I'm going to be downloading this free HDRI, and this is from polyhaven.com, so the link's in the description if you'd like to download it. So I'll be downloading the 1K version and the HDR version. And then also to create the stop sign, I will be using a free stop sign image from Pixabay. So it's a free image, and again, I'll have the link in the description if you'd like to download it. And then and again on Pixabay, I will be downloading this free gas station image. So again, the link's in the description if you'd like to download that, and I'll be adding that to this gas station model. And also on Pixabay, I will be downloading this free image right here. So again, links in the description if you'd like to download that. And then I will also be using the EV render engine in this tutorial, because I do think EV works really well for these low poly assets, but you could totally use cycles if you want to. Now also, because I'm going to be using Blender EV, I'll be using my free EV glass shader. So if you'd like to, you can pause this tutorial and go and watch my EV glass shader tutorial. Or if you'd just like to download my free EV glass shader, I also have a free download of my EV glass shader on my Gumroad store. All right, so to start off, we are going to be modeling the low poly fire hydrant. So I'm going to press A to select everything, and then I will just delete it. So I'm now going to press Shift C. That's just going to make sure the 3D cursor is in the very center of our 3D view. So I can now press shift A and I'm going to go right down here and add a circle. Now right behind me, if you click on the add circle settings on the vertices here, I'm just going to change that to 12 so that it's more low poly and then I can close this. So let's zoom in and then I'm going to tab into edit mode. So I am going to press A to make sure everything is selected and then I can press G to grab and Z. We're going to bring it down on the Z axis just a little. So I can now press seven on the numpad and that is going to take me to the side view. So I'm now going to press E to extrude. I'm going to press Z and that is going to bring it up on the Z axis and I'll just bring it up like that. I'm now going to press E to extrude and then I'm going to press S right after that to scale it and I'm going to bring it out a little bit so just like that. Then I can press E to extrude again and again we want to press Z to bring it up on the Z axis and uh, also you can see my screencast keys right down here so in the corner there you can see what buttons I'm pressing. So now I'm going to press E again to extrude this out but then I want to press S to scale it back down and I'm scale it back down so it's about the same size as this right here so just about that big so I'm now going to zoom out a little bit and then I'm going to press E to extrude and again press Z to bring it up on the Z axis and I'm going to bring it up about this high so just like that all right now I actually want to make this a little bit thinner and a little bit wider so what I'm going to do is press 3 or click right here to go to the face select and then I'm going to hold down the alt key and select that loop of faces and then I'm going to hold down the shift and alt key and select that loop of faces and then I'll navigate down here shift alt and select that loop of faces so I can now press s to scale we're going to bring it down on the z axis just like that and then just press a to deselect everything and again I'm going to hold down the alt key and select that loop of faces and then I can press s to scale and we want to scale it out now I don't want to scale it up I just want to scale it out so I'm going to press shift z and that way it's going to scale it on the x and y axis but not the z axis so I'll just bring it out about that far all right, let's press one on the numpad to go back to front view. And then I'll press one on the top of my keyboard or click right here to the vertex select. And then I'm gonna hold down the alt key and select that loop of vertices. So I can now press E to extrude 
and then immediately after that press s to scale and we want to scale that out and i'll bring it out about that far then i can press e to extrude we're going to bring it up on the z-axis just about like that then i can press e to extrude we're going to bring it up again on the z-axis just about uh, that high and then I can press E to extrude and then S to scale and we're going to scale that down So again, this should be about the same size as this right here So now we need to make that kind of round top part. So I'll press E to extrude We're going to bring it up again on the z-axis about that far Then I can press E to extrude again again We want to bring it up on the z-axis so hit the z button Then I can click to place that and then I'll press s to scale it down and then again e to extrude we're going to bring it up on the z-axis and then i'll press s to scale and we'll scale that down and i'm just going to continue to do that until it's uh, pretty small so e to extrude z to bring it up on the z-axis and then s to scale and we will scale that down and then i actually want to scale this up a little bit and i'll press g and z to bring it down like that and then i'll press e to extrude and then s to scale and we're going to scale that in so i'll bring it in a little bit just like that then i can press e to extrude we're going to bring it up on the z-axis and then again i'll press e to extrude and then s to scale and i want to scale that down a little bit and then we're just going to make a little thing kind of at the top so i'll press e to extrude again we're going to bring it up on the z-axis and just bring it up about that far and then to fill a face right here i'm going to press f and that will fill a face i can press Control b and Control b is going to add a bevel and i'll just add a little bevel there just so that that's a little bit less sharp all right tab back into object mode let's take a look that is looking cool um i want to save this project so let's go file and save as and i'll save this as low poly city assets and i will save that so now what I want to do is hold down the alt key and then I'll select that ring of vertices then I can press Control B we want to add a little bevel there just to make that rounding there a little bit more smooth so I can now go down here let's alt and select that loop of vertices and then I'll press Control B again to add a bevel just like that so let's move down here to the bottom and I want to add some loop cuts so that we can make kind of a little bit of a lip so I'm gonna press Control R to add a loop cut and then you can click drag down and then just click to place it about there. I can press Control R down here, click and bring it up and then click to place that right there. So I'm gonna zoom in and then I will press three on the top of my keyboard or click right here to the face select. And then I wanna hold down the Alt key and select that loop of faces. So I can now press E to extrude and then immediately after that press S to scale. We're gonna scale this out a little bit and then I can press S to scale and Z to bring it down on the Z axis and we'll just make that a bit smaller. So if you tap back in object mode, kind of zoom out, you can see that is the little detail that we're getting. So make sure you tab back into object mode and I now wanna add those two little things coming out on the side of the fire hydrant. So I'm going to press Shift C, that will center the 3D cursor to the center and then I'll press Shift A and I'm gonna go right down here and add a circle. And then if you click on the add circle settings right behind me, just make sure the vertices is set to 12 and then I can close that so I'll press G to grab we're gonna bring it up on the z-axis just bring it up about that far click to place that so I want the origin point to stay in the center so that I can add a mirror modifier and it'll mirror it over to the other side so I'm going to now tab into edit mode and that way if I press G to grab and move the mesh out you can see the origin point is still in the center whereas if I were in object mode you can see it's going to move the origin point so I'll tab into edit mode and I'll press G to grab I'm gonna click with my mouse wheel and then let go to constrain it to the x-axis and bring it over. And then I can also scale it down. So I'm now gonna press R to rotate. I wanna rotate this on the y-axis and then I can type in nine, zero and enter just to rotate that over. And then I can also press one to go to the front view. And then I will scale this down just a little bit more. So press G to grab and then click with your mouse wheel to constrain it to the axis. We're gonna bring it in. We're just gonna put it inside the fire hydrant. And then I'm gonna press one or click right up here to go to the vertex select and I'll press E to extrude we want to extrude this out on the x-axis so you can click and hold with your mouse wheel to constrain it to the x-axis and I'll just bring it out about this far and then I can press s to scale that down so let's press the period key on the numpad just to zoom over to it and I'll press E to extrude and then s to scale and we'll scale that down and just place that there then I can press E to extrude we want to bring it out on the x-axis again 
just click to place that and then I can press E to extrude and then S to scale and we're going to scale that down just about like that. Then I can press E to extrude and again we want to bring it out on the X axis just like that. Just click to place that and then I can press F and that'll fill a face. And then I want to add just a little bit of a bevel just to give it some more detail. So I'll press Control B. That's going to add a bevel there and just bring it out that far and click to place that. All right, so there we have it. There is that one side. Now it looks like the normals might be flipped. So to know for sure if I need to recalculate the normals, I'm going to click on this button right up here, and this is the viewport overlays. And then right down here, I'm going to click on the face orientation. And you can see that it's actually red, and we want it to look blue, not red. So we need to recalculate the normals. So I'm going to just do it for both of these objects at the same time. So I'm going to shift select this object so both of them are selected. And then I can tab into edit mode and then just double tap the A key to make sure everything is selected. Now to recalculate the normals you can press shift N. Shift N is going to flip the normals or recalculate the normals and now everything should look blue. So I can now tab back into object mode and then I can just click right here and remove the face orientation. All right so I'm going to select this object and I'm going to tab back into edit mode and actually I just want to scale the whole thing up a little bit so it's just a little bit bigger. So I'll scale the whole thing up just about like that and then I'll place it right there. All right now I want to add a mirror modifier so it mirrors it over to the other side. So let's click right over here on the modifiers and then I can click on add modifier and I want to go right down here and add a mirror modifier. So that is going to mirror it over to the other side and just click on the correct axis. So if the X axis isn't the correct one, you can change it to Y. Um, but for me, X is the correct one. And then let's zoom in here and I'm going to tab into edit mode again. So there's just a few things I want to do. Um, one thing I'm going to do is hold down the alt key and select this loop of vertices. And then I can press control B. Control B will add a bevel just like that. And then I want to add just a little detail here. So I'm going to add something kind of like this, but instead of it coming out, it's going to go back in. So I'm going to press control R and then we'll click drag over over and then just click to place it about there and then I'll press control R we're going to click to add a loop cut drag it over there and then just click to place that so I can now press three or click right up here to the face select and I'll hold down the alt key and just select that loop of vertices so I can now press E to extrude and then I'll press S to scale and then again I don't want it to be scaled on the X axis because that's going to scale it back and forth so I'm going to press shift X and that will remove the X axis so I can now just scale that down just about like that, click to place that. All right, so we now have a little detail right in there and that is looking very nice. So I'm now gonna be modeling the main piece right here and I believe that's the piece where they would screw the hose into. So I'm gonna select the main object and then I will tab into edit mode. Now I'm gonna click right here to the vertex select. We're gonna hold down the alt key and just select one of these rings of vertices and I can press shift D to duplicate. We're gonna bring it over on the Y axis and then I can also scale it down. And then I wanna rotate it over. So I'll press R to rotate. We're gonna rotate it on the Y axis. Actually, we wanna rotate it on the X axis, just like that. And then I wanna rotate it so it's exactly up. So I can just type in nine, zero, and then enter to rotate that over exactly by 90 degrees. So I can now press G to grab. We're gonna bring it down on the Z axis. Let's also press one to go to the front view. And then I do wanna scale this up a bit more. So I'll scale that probably about that big. And then I can press G and Z, and we're going to bring that down. So it's kind of in the center there. All right, so I now wanna press G to grab. We're gonna bring it over on the Y axis. We're just gonna bring that in. We're gonna bring it all the way inside the fire hydrant. So I can now press E to extrude, click with your mouse wheel and bring it out on the Y axis. And I'll bring it out about that far. And then I'm gonna be pretty much making the exact same thing right here. So to do that, I'm gonna press E to extrude and then S to scale. And let's just scale that down to about there. I can press E to extrude. We're gonna bring it out on the Y axis again. And then I'll press E to extrude and S to scale. We're going to scale that down to about there and then I can press E to extrude again and we're going to bring it out on the Y axis and then I can press F to fill that face and then let's add some bevels so I'll press control B to add a bevel we'll bevel that out let's also hold down the alt key and select that loop of vertices and then I'll press control B to add a bevel right there and then also I do want to make this entire thing just a little bit smaller so I'm going to press Z move my mouse over and let go to go into the wireframe and then if you press B for the box select you can just click and drag and select all the 
those vertices. And then I'll press Z, go back to solid view and let go. And I can press S to scale and we just want to scale the whole thing down just a little, not too much, but just a little bit smaller. Now if I tab back into object mode, you can see the shading looks a bit weird. As I talked about earlier, you can see it looks darker over here, but then these objects look darker over here. And that is because I need to recalculate the normals because this is red. So I can click on the face orientation right up here if I want to check, but usually I can tell that it's off just by looking at the mat cap. So I'm going to tab in edit mode and I want to double tap the A key and then I can press shift N and that'll recalculate the normals. Let's press control S again to save and we're now going to just set up some basic materials. Before we do that though, I do want some nice lighting. So what I'm going to do is click right over here on the world properties and I'm going to be adding in HDRI into the world. So I'm going to click on the color right here, click on this little yellow dot and then I'm going to click on environment texture and then I can click on open. And then this is the HDRI that I'll be using that I talked talked about at the starting of the tutorial. So if you'd like to download this, the link will be in the description and I'm going to download the 1K version and the HDR version. So just click on that and then click on open image. And then also I need to click right over here on the render properties and I'm going to change this to a Blender Eevee because I will be using Eevee for this tutorial. So I can now press Z, move my mouse up and go into the rendered view just to preview how that's looking. And then to make Eevee look just a little bit nicer, I'm going to turn on the ambient occlusion, the bloom, the screen space reflections, and then if you're doing any animation, you could turn on the motion blur as well. Now I don't really want to be able to see the HDRI in the background because that is a little bit distracting. So I'm going to go right down here and I'm going to open up the film tab. And then I can click on the transparent button and that way it's going to be transparent. And then I'm also going to press shift A and to just get a little bit nicer lighting, I'm going to add a light and I'm going to add a sunlight. Let's press G and Z, we're going to bring that up. And then I can kind of go to the side here and I'll just rotate that light over. And then I'll just kind of move this over, just move it over here so it's kind of out of the way. Now if you click right over here on the object data properties to change the light settings, I want to turn the strength up a bit so it's a little bit brighter, not too bright, maybe just like a three or something. So that's nice. If I just zoom into that object, you can see we have a nice shadow there. All right, so let's do the materials now. So I'm going to click right over here on the material properties. Let's just select this object and then I can click on new to add a new material and I can just call this fire hydrant and then this is a pretty simple material I'm just going to be turning the base color to a very bright red color but then I will make it a little bit darker and maybe just slightly less saturated maybe a little bit darker so something like that so it's pretty simple and then I'm also going to select this object right here and I'm going to go over to the modifier properties and I want this to be a part of this object so I'm just going to apply the mirror modifier so just click on this button right here and click on apply so if you now tap into edit mode, that is both geometry. So then back in object mode, I want to select this object and then shift select this object. And then to join these together so that they are one object, I can just press control J that will join them together. So if I tap into edit mode, you can see they are all one object. So now what I want to do is I want to make these pieces here have a shiny metal material. So to do that, I'm going to hover my mouse over the object and I'll press L and then just hover your mouse over these objects and press L. That is going to select all of the linked vertices because these vertices are linked together. So I now want to create a new material. So I'm going to click on this button right here to make a new material in this object's material slot. And then I can click on new. And I'm just going to rename this material to fire hydrant metal. And then if I click on the fire hydrant metal, just make sure that's selected and make sure that these are selected. And I'm going to click on assign and that will assign that material to those objects. Let's tab back into object mode now and I want to change the base color. So I'm going to make the base color a dark gray color and then to make it look like metal I'm going to turn the metallic value all the way up to one and then also if you want to make it a bit more shiny you could turn this roughness value down and that'll just make it a bit more shiny and then also you could turn this base color up just a little all right so we are almost finished with this but I do want to create some bolts kind of going around here and then also some bolts going around here so I'm going to select this object and I'll tab back into edit mode and then I want to press shift C again just to make sure the 3d cursor is in the very center there so I'm going to press shift a and I'm going to go right down here and I'm going to add a cylinder now if you click on the add cylinder settings it's right behind me so you can't really see it but just open up the add cylinder settings on the vertices here I'm just to change the vertices to six and then I can just close that. So this is going to be our bolt. So let me just press period on the numpad to zoom over to it. Now I also want to make it be the metal. So just select the fire hydrant metal and make sure the bolt is selected and then you can click on the assign button and then it will 
put the metal on that object. So I can now press G to grab. We're gonna bring it up on the Z axis. Just bring it up and then I can press S to scale. We're gonna scale that down. So I'll now press seven on the numpad to go to top view and I wanna scale this down a bit smaller. And then I can press G to grab and I'm gonna bring this over and maybe scale it up just a little so it's just like that. Then I can press G and Z and we're going to bring that down. Now I want the bolt to be up here but I also wanna have another bolt down here. So I can just press S to scale. We can scale it up on the Z axis and just make that long enough so that it can go through. So I can now press G and Z and we are just going to bring that down. Maybe scale it down on the Z axis now. So just like that, maybe just scale it up a little bit. And let's press Control S again to save. So I'm now gonna press seven to go to top view and I can now just duplicate the bolt and just kind of put it all around. So I'm gonna tab into edit mode and I can press Shift D to duplicate. I'll just bring it over here and I'm just gonna place it right about there. And actually I'll press G to grab and bring it over a little bit farther because I want it to be about there. And then just to make it look a bit more random, I'm just gonna give each bolt a random rotation. So I'll just press R to rotate and just kind of rotate it around. So I'll now press Shift D to duplicate. We're gonna put another one here and then R to rotate. Shift D to duplicate, let's put another one there, give that a random rotation, and then Shift D to duplicate, we're gonna stick that there, and then R to rotate. So we've added a bolt here and then two bolts here, so I'll press Shift D, we can add another bolt there, and then in between these four bolts, there's gonna be a bolt in between each bolt. So I'll press Shift D again, we're gonna put that in the center there, the center of those two bolts, we can just rotate that, and then I'll press Shift D again, put it right there, and then just give it a random rotation. All right, so now we have all those bolts going around there. So I just wanna duplicate the bolts and then just stick them down there at the bottom. So I'm going to hover my mouse over each bolt and I'm gonna press L, and that is going to select all of the linked vertices. So just continue to hover your mouse over the bolt and press L to select the entire bolt. So now that we have all those selected, I can press Shift D and Z, and we are just going to bring the bolt bolts down. And then also you might need to just press S to scale and scale them down a little bit. And then I don't want the bolts to be coming through. So I'm going to press S to scale and Z and bring it in on the Z axis just like that. And then I can press G and Z and we are just going to bring that up. And then if you want to give these a random rotation, something cool that you can do is you can click right here on the transform pivot point and you can change this to individual origins. So now if you press R to rotate and rotate it on the Z axis, you can see that each bolt is going to move individually and then you can just click to place that. And then I'm just going to click on this and I'm going to change this back to the default, which is a median point. And then just one more thing that I want to do, I want to zoom in here and I'm going to alt and select that ring of vertices. And then I can press control B and just add a bevel like that. And then just down here, let's do the same thing. So alt select that loop of vertices and I'll just press control B, just drag out and then just click to place that. And there we have it. So there is the first asset. So there is the fire hydrant. So I'm just going to bring this out and then over here in the collections, I can just rename this to fire hydrant. So I'm going to open up this collection here and you can see we have the sun uh, and that is this object right here. And then we also have the circle, which is the fire hydrant. So I can just rename this to fire hydrant. So I just selected this material and I pressed control C and then I selected this and pressed control V to paste that. So I'll just select this asset and I'll press G to grab. We're gonna bring it over on the X axis and I'll just put it kind of over here so it's kind of out of the way. And then I wanna hide it from view. So I'm just gonna select it and then I can press H and H will hide the object. So let's create the traffic cone next. So I'm going to press Shift A and then let's go up here to mesh and I'm going to start with a circle. I'll press period on the numpad to zoom over to the circle. And then before you do anything with the circle, just click on the add circle settings and on the vertices here, I just wanna change this to eight so that it is very low poly. And then I can close the add circle settings. So let's tab into edit mode and I'm going to press E to extrude and I'm going to extrude it up on the Z axis just like this. Um, maybe bring it down a little bit more, something like that. And then I can press E to extrude and then I'll press S to scale and we're just gonna scale that down a bit. Let's press one on the numpad to go to side view so we can just see how that's looking from the side view. And I'm gonna press E to extrude we're gonna bring it up on the Z axis and I'm just gonna make it about that high. And then I'll press S to scale and we wanna scale that down quite a bit. And then I'll press G and Z and just bring that down a little and maybe scale it up a little bit. Now I also wanna make this a bit thinner. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key and just select that ring of vertices and then Shift Alt select that ring of vertices. So I can now press G and Z and we're just gonna bring that down just a little. And then I'm also going to Alt select that ring of vertices and then Shift Alt and select that 
that ring of vertices and I want to scale it out because I want that to be just a little bit bigger. So I'll press S to scale and then I don't want to scale it on the Z axis. So I'm going to press shift Z and I'm just going to bring that out a little bit. So that's a bit bigger. All right, let's tap back into edit mode and I'm just going to alt and select that ring of vertices again. So I'll just press S to scale. I'll scale that up a little bit and then I can press E to extrude and then S to scale and I want to bring that down. And then let's press one on the numpad to go to side view and I want to be able to see inside this object. So I'll press Z, move over and let go to go into wireframe. And then I can press E to extrude and we're going to bring this down on the Z axis and I'll just bring it down about that far. And then I can press S to scale and we want to scale this whole thing up. So it's quite a bit bigger. So about that. So basically the thickness right there needs to be about even. So I think I'll scale it up a little bit more. All right. So let's go back into solid view. You can press Z, move your mouse over and then let go to go into solid view. And I now want to put faces in between here and here. So I'm going to hold down the alt and shift key and then select that ring of vertices. So we have both of those rings of vertices selected. So we can just tell Blender to automatically fill those faces. So to fill those faces, I'm going to press Control E. And Control E will bring up these modeling settings. And I'm going to go right here to the third one. And the third one is bridge edge loops. So if I click on that, it's going to bridge those loops and it's going to add faces in there. So I can tap back into object mode. And that is pretty much it for the modeling of our cone. I do want to tab into edit mode though, because I do want to add some loop cuts so that we can add some white stripes. So I'll press Control R. We're going to add a loop cut. Let's just click and drag a loop cut right about there. And then I'll press Control R. We're going to click and drag a loop cut to about there. Then I can press Control R again. I'll click and add a loop cut right there. And then I can press Control R and just click and add a loop cut about there. All right, that is looking good. I do need to press A a couple of times to select everything. And then I'll press Shift N to just recalculate the normals. All right, so now in object mode, I'm going to press Z, move my mouse up to go into the rendered view, and let's add the materials. So I'm going to click on new, and I can just call this traffic cone. Now on the base color here, I'm going to make this a bright orange color. So kind of a reddish orangish color, like a classic traffic cone. And then let's tab into edit mode, and I'm going to press three on the top of my keyboard or click right here to go to the face select. So I'm going to hold down the alt key and select that ring of faces, and then I can hold down the shift and alt key and select that ring of faces. So then right up here on the materials in the material slots, I want to click on the plus here and I'm going to click on new and I can just rename this material to traffic cone stripes. And then I want to click on the traffic cone stripes and just make sure those stripes are still selected. And I click on assign just to assign that. And then on the base color here, I'm going to make this a little bit brighter. And then because traffic cones are plastic, they usually are kind of shiny. So on the roughness here, I'm just going to turn the roughness maybe to like a 0.25. So it's a bit more shiny. Let's also click on the traffic cone, the orange one. And then on the roughness here, just make the roughness like a 0.25. So that way the traffic cone is a bit more shiny. So then let's select the traffic cone and right here I can actually just select this. I'm going to double click on this to select it and I'll press control C to copy the name and then double click on the circle here in the outliner. I can press control V to paste that so we now have the traffic cone object. So I'll press G to grab and then I'll click with my mouse wheel and just constrain it to the X axis and then I'll just press H and that will hide the traffic cone from the view. So now we can create the next object. All right, so now we're going to be modeling the trash bags. So I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to go right down here. And again, let's add a circle. And then if you click right there behind me on the add circle settings, I'm going to set the vertices to 12 and then I can close this. And then I'm going to press period on the numpad just to zoom over to the circle and I'll tab into edit mode. And then I'll press one as well to go to the vertex select. And also I don't need to be in rendered mode. So I'm going to press Z, move my mouse over and let go to go into the solid view. And then let's scale this down a little bit. And then I'm going to press F to fill a face. So I'll press E to extrude and then I'll press S to scale, scale that out a bit. And then I'll press E to extrude and then S to scale, E to extrude and S to scale. So we're basically just going to make the bag shape and then we will kind of make the bag slumping over um, like it was kind of put on the ground and maybe it has some things in it. So I'll press E to extrude and then S to scale and E to extrude and S to scale. Just make it really small, really small. And then I can press E to extrude we're just going to 
bring that up and then I can press E to extrude and S to scale, kind of just the same exact thing. E to extrude, click to place that, S to scale, and then E to extrude again, and then we'll just make that a little bit smaller. So I'll press E to extrude, S to scale, and then E to extrude, and then S to scale. So that is kind of like our basic bag shape. So I now just want to kind of make it so it's slumping over. So I'm going to tab into edit mode, and I'm going to click right up here and turn on the proportional editing. The shortcut key for this is O. So if you click on O, that's going to toggle the proportional editing. So now what I'm going to do is just select some vertices. So I'm just going to select this one, maybe shift select this one, and I can press G to grab. And you can see because we have the proportional editing turned on, it's going to pull vertices along with it. So I can just kind of pull this over, maybe pull this up, maybe select this and bring it down just like that. I can also select these, just kind of bring them over like that and maybe bring that over and maybe bring this over as well. Just kind of make the bag look like it's slumping over. So it's resting on the ground. Um, so something like that. Now I want to duplicate this and make one more. So I'm going to press shift D to duplicate. We're going to bring that over, press G to grab. We're going to constrain it to the Y axis. G to grab, and we're going to constrain it on the X axis. And then I can also rotate this over on the Z axis. So just like that. I'll tab into edit mode, and then I also want to press Z, move my mouse over, and let go to go into wireframe. And then I can press B for the box select. I'm just going to box select all of these. So we're just going to select the top vertices right there. Let's press Z, go back into solid view. I can press R to rotate and G to grab. We can also select some of these pieces and just kind of move them over. Um, just kind of make the trash bags look natural like somebody just set them on the ground maybe also bring that over a little bit we could also maybe make that a bit bigger and just kind of bring it down a little bit as well all right so that is it for our trash bag so i'm going to click on the trash bag let's click on new and i can just rename this to trash bag and let's press z move your mouse up and let go to go into the rendered view and on the base color here i'm just gonna make it pretty dark so pretty dark. And then also I don't want it to be very shiny. So I'm going to turn the roughness up to make it less shiny. And then also if you want to make it less reflective, you can turn the specular down. So if you turn on the specular, that is going to make it darker and less reflective. All right. And then I want to put the trash bag material on this object. So I'll just click right here and drag and drop that material onto that trash bag as well. And maybe just make this all the way to fully black. And then if you want to tab back into edit mode and just do some last adjustments, um, you kind of make the bottom a bit flatter or just play around with it and try to make it look more natural. And that is it for the trash bag. So right up here in the outliner, I can just rename these. So I'm going to rename this to trash bag one and this one I'll rename to trash bag two. And then I'm just going to shift and select both of these objects. I can press G to grab and I'm just going to bring these over so that they're kind of out of the way. And then I can press H to hide them. All right. So the next one we're going to create is the stop sign. So just press shift C to center the 3D cursor and I'll press shift A and I'm going to go right down here and add a cube. I'll tab into edit mode and then I can press the period key just to zoom into the cube. Then I can press S to scale and I want to scale it down. And actually, let me just escape that. I need to turn off the proportional editing um, because when I was modeling the trash bags, I turned on the proportional editing. So let me just turn that off. So I can press S to scale and we'll scale that pretty far down. I can zoom in and then I can press G and Z and we are just going to bring that up just like that. So I can just select everything now and I'm going to scale everything on the Y axis just to make it a little bit thinner. And then let's click right up here to go to the face select and I'm just going to select the top face. So I can now press one and that is going to go to the front view and I can just zoom out and I'll press G to grab and Z on the Z axis. And we're just going to bring that up. And I'll just bring that up to about there, so just about that tall. So now I'm going to press Shift A, and I'm going to go right here and add a circle. And then I'll also press 7 on the numpad to go to top view. And then right behind me on the Add Circle Settings, just click on that to open it up. And on the vertices here, I'm just going to change this to 8. So I'll change that to 8 and then just close that. Now a stop sign is usually the shape, although this edge here is usually on the top. Now I've just pulled up a calculator here and what I want to do is I want to take 360 degrees and I want to divide that 
by 8 because 360 degrees is all the way around. So if you're to rotate something by 360 degrees, that's going to rotate it all the way around. Now we have eight faces here, so I'm going to divide this by eight. So if we divide 360 into eight pieces, then each piece is going to have 45 degrees. Now I don't want to rotate this over by 45 degrees because if I press R to rotate and then type in 45 and enter, you can see that it looks exactly the same. And that is because now this right here just got rotated up here. So instead, I want to divide this by two, and then that will tell us exactly how far it's going to be so that this is exactly straight. So we can take 45 and just divide that by two. That'll tell us that we need to rotate this over by 22 and a half degrees. So let's just close this. I'm going to press R to rotate, and then I can type in 22.5 and enter. And you can see that now that is rotated exactly over. So this edge here is going back and forth. So I'm now going to press R to rotate, and I'm going to rotate this on the X axis, and I'll type in 9, 0, and enter just to rotate that over. And I can now press G and then Z, and we are just going to bring that up. So I can now just press S to scale, and we're going to scale that up. And then I'm going to press 3 on the numpad, and that is going to take me to side view. And I can press G to grab. I'm going to click with my mouse wheel to constrain it to the Y axis, and I'll just put it right there so it's flat to that pole. So I can now press F, and that is going to fill a face. And then let's click right here to go to the vertex select, and I'll press E to extrude. We're going to extrude that out, and we'll just make it kind of thick just like that. All right, tab back into object mode. So that is it for the modeling of the stop sign. So it's pretty simple, but now we are going to be adding the material. So I'll just select the stop sign and I'll just click on new and I can just call this stop sign pull. All right, so that is gonna be the metal pull. So now to create this material, I'm just gonna turn the base color down to a gray color. Let's also go into rendered mode by pressing Z and moving your mouse up to go into the rendered view. So we're gonna turn the base color down to make it kind of a gray color. And then we can also turn the metallic value all the way to one. So it is a metal material, and then let's also turn the roughness down a little bit so it's a bit more shiny. All right, so that is looking pretty cool. Um, now I am going to be adding that texture that I talked about at the beginning of the tutorial. So a link is in the description if you'd like to download the free stop sign texture from Pixabay. So what I'm going to do is tab into edit mode, and then I just want to hover my mouse over the stop sign and press L. That's going to select all the linked vertices, so it'll just select the stop sign. So I'm going to scroll up here, and then I can click on the plus here in the material slot to add a new material. I'm going to click on new, and I can just rename this to stop sign. So now to add in the texture, I'm going to click right over here on the shading tab so that we can preview Blender's shader nodes. So I now need to add in that image texture. So I'll press shift A and I'm going to search for an image texture. Let's drop the image texture down here and then I can plug the color into the base color and then let's open up our image texture. And then here is the texture that I've downloaded from Pixabay. So I'm going to click on the stop sign and then I'll click on open image. All right, now if we press Z, move up, go into rendered mode, you can see that we can't really see that. Um, so let's click over here on the material properties and I want to click on the stop sign. And then I actually just want the stop sign material to be on this face right here. So what I'm going to do is press three on the top of my keyboard, or you can also scroll over and click right here to go to the face select. And I'm just going to select this face. So I can now click on the stop sign and then I'll click on the assign button. And that is going to assign the stop sign material to that face. Now it doesn't really look any different and that's because I need to tap into edit mode and I need to press U and then I'm just going to click on unwrap and that will unwrap the stop sign. Now that isn't looking quite right because it's kind of rotated over at an odd angle. So to fix this, I'm going to go right over here to the UV editing tab and we can play around with the UVs. So I'm going to press Z, move my mouse down and then let go to go into the material preview. So you can see that the UV editing is actually placed pretty well, although I will just press S to scale and scale it slightly down just so that um, that's not going through at all because I don't want that to be going over the sign, so I'll just scale that down a little bit. And now I just need to rotate this over. So in the UV editor, I can press R to rotate and we're gonna rotate this. Now I can actually hold down the control key and holding down the control key is going to rotate this by increments. So I'm just gonna rotate this over just like that and then click to place that. And that is looking correct. And then if you need to press G to grab or S to scale, um, you can just do that to fix the location of the UV editing. But that looks good for me. So I'm gonna go right back over here to the shading tab. Now I do wanna do a little bit to this stop sign. One thing that I wanna do is I wanna turn the roughness down. So I'm gonna take the roughness value and just turn it to like a 0.2. Um, so that's a little bit more shiny. So that was looking pretty cool. Maybe turn it to like a 0.3 so it's not quite that shiny. And then also something that you could do just to make this 
look kind of cool is you could take the color and you could put the color into the normal. Now we need to convert this to normal data because this is color data and this is normal data. So we need to convert it. So we're going to press shift A. We're going to search for a bump node and let's put the bump node right in here. So the color is going to go into the height and then the normal can go to the normal. So now if you zoom in here, you can see that it just looks like there's a tiny little bump there on the letters. So if you like that look, you could just add that. I do think that looks pretty cool. It just makes it look slightly 3D and it kind of makes those edges look like they're popping out a little bit. So I am going to go with that. So let's go right back over here to the layout and I can just rename this object. So just select the object and then right over here on the outliner, I'm just going to rename this to stop sign. And then I can just kind of bring it over here to move it out of the way. And then I'll press H to hide that. So I can now just press control S to save. All right, so let's create the low poly car next. So I'm going to press shift C again to center the 3D cursor, and then I'll press shift A and I'm going to add a plane. And then I'll press the period key on the numpad to zoom into the plane. Let's tab into edit mode and I want to press R to rotate. I'm going to rotate this on the X axis, actually the Y axis get those mixed up. And then I'm going to type in nine zero and enter. So we're going to be modeling the side of the car and then we'll extrude the car out to give it some thickness. And then I also want to add a mirror modifier because the car is going to look the same on both sides. So in edit mode, I'll press G to grab, cl click and hold with my mouse wheel to constrain it to the X axis. And I'll just bring it kind of over here for now. So I'm now going to press three on the numpad and that is going to go to the side view. And then I'll press one on the top of my keyboard or click right here to go to the vertex select and then I'm just going to select this vertex and then shift and select this vertex. So I can now press G to grab. Let's bring it over on the Y axis and we're going to make the back of the car. So this is going to be the front of the car. Then there's going to be the car engine kind of down here and then the wheels are going to be down here. So I now want to add a loop cut in the center here. So I'm going to press control R to add a loop cut, click to place that and then I'll bring it down just a little. So a little bit more down like that and then just click to place that right there. So I'm now going to select this vertex and then hold down the shift key and select this vertex and I want to scale these together. So I'll press S to scale and we're just going to scale those in a little bit. So this is going to be the back window and this is going to be the front window of the car. So I'm now going to select this vertex and I'll hold down the shift key and select this vertex and I want to extrude these out. So I'll press E to extrude. I'm going to bring them out on the Y axis and just bring that out. So this is going to be the car engine kind of like that. And then I'll select this vertex and I can press G to grab that and I'll bring it down on the Z axis. So the hood is just kind of slanting down a little bit. So now what I want to do is actually select this vertex and I'll press X and I want to delete the vertices. And why I'm doing that is because I need to add some wheels in here. So make sure you are still in edit mode and then I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to add a circle. Now if you click right behind me on the add circle settings, I'm going to change the vertices to 14 and then I can close this. So now I want to press R to rotate. I'm going to rotate it on the Y axis. So hit the Y and then you can type in nine is zero and enter to rotate that over by 90 degrees. And then I can press G to grab and we're going to kind of move this over here. And then also I want this to be perfectly flat with the rest of the object. So I'll double tap the A key to select everything and I can press S to scale. We want to scale it on the X axis and then I can just type in zero and enter and that'll just flatten all those vertices. So let's press three on the numpad to go to the side view. I'm gonna deselect everything and then I'm gonna use the box select. So press B for the box select. I'm gonna click and drag and just select those vertices. And then I can press X to delete and we're gonna delete the vertices. So I'm now gonna hover my mouse over this object and press L, that's gonna select the linked vertices. So the vertices that are connected and I wanna scale this down a bit and I'll press G to grab that and I'll put it over here and scale it down a little bit more. So I now want to duplicate this for the other wheel. So I'll press shift D that will duplicate it. Click with your mouse wheel, constrain it to the Y axis. And I'm going to put this one over here at the back of the car. All right. So now you can see the shape we're getting. So I'm now going to select this shift, select this, and we'll press F to fill that, select this vertex and then shift, select this vertex and I'll press F to fill that. And then we'll do the same thing here. So select those and I'll press F to fill that. So I'm now just going to use the box select again with B and I'm going to box select this entire thing and then I'll press F to fill that and that's going to fill a face. So you can see that is starting to look like a low poly car. So let's add the mirror modifier now. So I'm going to click over on the modifiers. Let's click on add modifier and we're going to go right down here and add the mirror. So I'll tab in edit mode and I want to select everything and I'll press G to grab. We're going to bring it in on the X axis and make that car a bit thinner because I don't want it to be quite that wide. So something like that. And then I want to 
merge these together. So I'll press E, that is going to extrude these and I'll push them in just like that. Now right now it is going through the mirror and so what I wanna do is turn on the clipping button so it doesn't go through the mirror. So I can now press G to grab, bring it out on the X axis and you can see now it is flattened with the mirror. Now if you zoom in here, you can see we have some faces in there and I don't want that, I don't want those faces in there. So I'm gonna press X to delete and I'm just gonna delete the faces. So now the faces are deleted in there. And then it also looks like the normals need to be recalculated because the shading does look a bit weird. So in edit mode, I'm just going to select everything and I'll press shift N. Shift N is going to recalculate the normals. So now let's add some loop cuts in here so that we can create the windows. So I'm going to press three on the numpad to go to side view and I'm going to zoom in here. I'll press Z, move my mouse over and let go to go into wireframe. And then I'll press A to deselect everything. So I want to add a loop cut going down here and then we can add those different windows. So I'm going to press K and K is going to use the knife tool. I'm going to move my mouse right down here and click to add a cut right there. Then what I want to do is I want to press the Z button. So when you press the Z button, that is going to constrain your cut to increments. And that way it's going to be going straight up. So I'm just going to move it up. And then also I want this to cut through the entire mesh. So I'm going to press the C button, C for cut through. So if you look right down here, you can see there's this angle constraint. And if I press Z, that's going to get rid of the angle constraint. The Z button will turn it on and off. And then also right here, you can see it says cut through right down there in the corner. If I press C, the C key is going to toggle that on and off. So I want it to be turned on and that way it'll cut through the entire mesh. So I'm going to bring my mouse right up here, click to place that, and then I can press enter. So now if you go right up here, you can see that it cut through the mesh. So it went all the way through and it added a loop cut going straight up and down. So that is exactly what I want. So I'm going to press three now to go to the face select or click right up here. And I now just want to select this face here. So we are going to add a window. So I'm going to press I and I will inset that face and I can just bring it down just about like that. And then I can press E to extrude and I'm just gonna extrude that back in, so about like that. Let's do the same thing around the rest of the car. So I'm gonna select this, we'll press I to inset that face, bring it down, then I can press E to extrude and we're gonna bring that back. Let's also press Control S to save our project. Let's select this one and we're gonna press I again. Now this one, I want it to be connected to the mirror. I just want it to be one big window. So I'm gonna press B after I press I and B is going to toggle the boundary. If you look right up here, you can see it says boundary. Right now it is on. If I press B, that is going to toggle the boundary. So I want to turn the boundary off. So I'm just going to bring that down and then just click to place that. So you can see now that is connecting with the mirror. So I can now press E to extrude and we're going to extrude that back to make the front window. And then let's go to the back here. I'm going to select this back one. I'm going to press I to inset that and the boundary is already turned off. So that is how I want it. So let's just make this a bit smaller. Click to place that. And then I can press E to extrude and we will extrude that back. All right, there we go. So we now have those windows for the car. So now let's do the side mirrors on the car. So I'm gonna press tab to go back into edit mode. So I'm gonna press shift A and I'm going to add a cube. And then let's also turn off the clipping and I'm gonna press G to grab and just bring the cube over here and then I'll scale it down. So make sure the cube is not going through the mirror and then we can turn the clipping back on. So I'll press S to scale. I'm gonna scale this on the Y axis to make it a bit thinner. We'll scale that down. I can press G to grab we're going to stick the mirror right over here. So kind of there on the side of the car. I'm also going to press S. We're going to scale it and I want to scale it on the X axis and I'll just make that a bit longer kind of like that. So I now want to create a piece right here which can go into the car. So to do that, I'll press Control R. We're gonna add a loop cut right there. And then I can press Control R again. We're gonna add another loop cut right there. So I can now click right here to go to the face select and then I'm going to click right here on this face. And I can press E to extrude and we are going to extrude that out. And I'm just gonna stick this so that it's going inside the car. And then I want to hover my mouse over this object and press L to select the linked vertices. And I can press G to grab and I'm gonna stick this kind of right down there. So just make sure it's going inside the car. So just like that. All right, so I now want to select this face and then I'm gonna hold down the shift key and I'm gonna select these other faces. And then I can press I to inset that. We're gonna inset all those faces. So just like that. And then I can press E to extrude and we're gonna extrude that back. So that is where the actual mirror is going to be. And then I thought it also might be cool if these sides here were beveled a little bit. So I'm gonna press one on the top of my keyboard to go to the vertex select. 
I'll press Z, move my mouse over, let go to go into wireframe, and then I can deselect everything. And then using the box select with a B, I can click and drag, and I'm just gonna box select all those vertices, and then I want to add a bevel. So I'm gonna press Control B, and that is going to add a bevel, and I can just bevel that out, so just something like that. Um, that is pretty good. So let's do the same thing down here. So I'll press Z, move over, go into wireframe. I'll deselect everything with A, and then I can press B for the box select. We're just gonna box select all those vertices, and I can now press Control B, and we're gonna add a bevel just like that. And I think I'll just do it right over here as well. So I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'll just box select these vertices right there, and I'll press Control B and right down here as well. So I'm just gonna box select those again, these ones here, and I'll press Control B to add a bevel. All right, that is looking much better. So I now want to add a little piece here to look like a door handle so you can open up the car. So I'll press Shift A and I'm going to add a cube. And then again, because I have my origin point right over here, it just added the cube right over here. So I just need to turn off the clipping, press G to grab and S to scale. We're just gonna kind of stick that here and then I can turn back on the clipping. So I'll press G to grab, we're gonna bring this over. I'm also gonna press the period key on the numpad to zoom over to it and then I can scale it down. And then I also want to scale it out on the Y axis. So you can scale that out just like that. I'll press G to grab and we're just going to bring this up. So this is basically just gonna be the door handle. So something like that is pretty good. All right, so let's now create the car bumpers on the front and the back. So I'll press Shift C again just to center the 3D cursor and I can press Shift A and I can just add a cube. I'll press the period on the numpad to zoom over to the cube. And then I can press G to grab and I'm going to bring this over and then I'll press S to scale and we want to scale that down and then I'll press G to grab. We're just going to stick this right here kind of on the back of the car and I need to scale it down a bit more so press S to scale it. We're just going to bring that down. Now a problem with this is because this was a cube if you zoom in here there is a face right in here and we don't want to have a face right in there. So I'm just going to press three on the top of my keyboard and just select this face. And then I can just press X to delete and we just want to delete the faces. All right, and then I need to select this object again. So I'm just going to press L with my mouse hovered over the object. That'll select all the linked vertices. And then we can also press three on the numpad to go to the side view and I'll press G to grab. We're just going to stick that right in there. Let's press one to go to the front view and then I'll press a G to grab and then click and hold with your mouse wheel to constrain to the X axis. And I'm just gonna stick it kind of right there. Now I want to give it some thickness kind of just on the side here. So I'm gonna press control R to add a loop cut. We're gonna click and then drag over and then click to place that. So I can now press three or click right up here to the face select and I'm just gonna select this face and then I can press E to extrude. We're gonna extrude that out and then just click to place that. So we now have that bumper there on the back of the car. So I wanna add the bumper on the front of the car as well. So I can just tab in edit mode and I'm gonna select this face and then hold down the shift key and select this face. So I can now press shift D to duplicate that click with your mouse wheel to constrain it to the Y axis and just bring it over. And then I can press the period on the numpad to zoom over to it. So I wanna bring that back a little bit closer and then I can press E to extrude. We're gonna extrude that bumper out just about like that. And then I'm just gonna select this face and I can press E to extrude and just make the bumper kind of go around the side of the car a little bit more. Now let's also create the license plate for the car. So I'm gonna select this face right here. I'll press Shift D to duplicate it and I'm gonna bring it up and kind of push it into the mirror. So if you kind of look over here, you can see now we have that license plate shape. I'll press G to grab. We're just gonna move it down. And I also wanna scale the whole thing up a little bit just so that the license plate is a little bit taller than the bumper. And I just wanna stick the license plate on the bumper. So just bring it over, press G to grab, bring it over like that. And then I can press E to extrude, we're just gonna give that some thickness and just stick it right there. And you can see the shading looks off because this is kind of darker, whereas this is lighter. So I'm just gonna hover my mouse over the object and press L, that'll select the linked vertices. And then to recalculate the normals, you can press Shift N and that'll recalculate the normals. And then also I think I'll just scale this down. So press S to scale and you can press G to grab and just kind of stick that where you want it. All right, that is looking pretty good. Now I wanna add this same license plate on the back. So I'll press Shift D to duplicate click with your mouse wheel to constrain it to the Y axis. We're just gonna bring it over there. And then I can press the period on the numpad just to zoom over to it. And then let's press G to grab, click with your mouse wheel. We're gonna bring it over and just stick it right there on the back of the bumper. All right, let's go back into object mode and just kind of zoom out and see how that is looking. 
All right, so let's do the wheels now. So to make the wheels, I'm gonna use a separate object. So I'll press Shift C again to center the 3D cursor, and I can press Shift A, and I'm gonna go right down here, and I'm gonna add a cylinder. And then let's press period on the numpad to zoom into the cylinder. Now, because we want this to be a low poly style, I wanna give it less vertices. So right behind me, if you click on the add cylinder settings right there, I'm gonna change the vertice count to 14, and then I can just close that. So I'm now gonna tab into edit mode, and I wanna press S to scale, we're going to scale that down, and then I'll tab into object mode, and I'll press G and Z, and we're going to bring that down so I can see that a bit better, and then I'll tab back into edit mode. So I can press R to rotate, and then I'll hit Y to bring it over on the Y axis, and then I can type in 9, 0, and enter to rotate it over by 90 degrees, and then I'll press G to grab, we're going to bring it out on the X axis just like that. And then I want to give it the mirror modifier so that we can just model one tire, and then it will duplicate it over. So I'm going to click on add modifier, and let's go down here and add the mirror modifier. We're going to mirror it on the X axis so that it's mirroring it over like that. So I can now press G to grab. We're going to bring that up and then S to scale. We're going to bring that out and then G to grab and bring that over. And then this is a uh, much too thick of a wheel. So let's press S to scale. We're going to scale it on the X axis and just make that much thinner. So something like that. And then I'll press three on the numpad to go to side view and I'll press G to grab and S to scale. And we're just going to stick that wheel up there and pretty much just fit the wheel inside there, just like that. So now right inside here, inside the wheel, I thought I'd just add a little beam there, even though you can't really see it um, from this perspective. I thought I'd just model a little beam there connecting the wheels. So I'm just going to select this face right here, and I'll press I to inset that, and I'll bring it down. And then I can press E to extrude. We're going to extrude that out, and I'll just stick it right there. And then you can see it's going through, so I actually just need to click to place that. I'll just actually press Control Z to undo that. And then I'm going to turn on the clipping right here on the mirror modifier. So I can now press E to extrude, and if I push it together, you can see now it's merging with the mirror. And then again, if you look inside here, we have an extra face in there, and I don't want that. So I can just press X to delete, and we just want to delete the faces. So now the face is deleted. And then I can tab back into object mode and see how that is looking. That's really good. I do want to scale the whole wheel down just a little bit so it fits a little bit better inside there. So I'm going to tab in edit mode, and I'm just going to select everything with the A key, and I can press S to scale. We're just going to scale it down a little bit, and then I can press G and Z. We're going to bring that up on the Z axis, and also I can press G to grab. We're going to bring it out on the X axis a little bit. All right, so that is is better. Let's tab back into edit mode again, and I just want to select this face right here. I'm now going to press I to inset that, and I'm just going to bring this down. So this is basically going to be the tire, and then right in here, this is going to be the hub cap. So I'm going to press E to extrude. We're going to extrude that out, and then I can press I again to inset that, just kind of bring that in there, and then I'll press E to extrude, and we're just going to extrude that hub cap kind of going back in, and then I can press I again, and that'll inset that, and we'll bring that down just like that, and then I can press E to extrude. We're gonna extrude that out one more time. And then I wanna add some bevels just to make it look a bit nicer. So I'll press Control B, we'll add a bevel there, just like that. And then I'm gonna click right over here on the vertex select, and then I want to hold down the Alt key and select that ring of vertices. So I'll just press Control B again. We're gonna add a bevel there. Just click to place that. Let's navigate over here, and I'll hold down the Alt key and select that ring of vertices. And then I can press Control B again to add a bevel just like that. Let's tab back into object mode, and I also want to add these wheels over here. Now I could just press Shifty to duplicate them and stick them there, but I also need to add the materials, and I also might want to edit the object a little bit. So what I'm gonna do instead is use the mirror modifier to mirror it over. So if I click on the Y axis, you can see that is doing most of the work for us. So we're also mirroring it over on the Y axis, and so that's mirroring it over, but you can see that it's not actually at the correct spot because there's a little bit of an opening right there. So what I'm gonna do is press Shift C, again to center the 3D cursor, and I can now press Shift A, and I'm going to go right down here to empty, and I'm going to add a plane axis, and then I'll press period on the numpad to zoom into it. And then I can press G to grab, and we're going to bring it down on the Z axis. So what I can do is I can tell these objects to be mirrored from this object. So I'm going to select these objects, and then you can see that we have this mirror object option. I'm going to click on the eyedropper, and then I'm going to just select our empty. Now nothing really changed, and that is because 
because the empty is in the very center, but I can now just select the empty and I can press G to grab. And you can see that now wherever the center of the empty is, that is where it's going to be mirrored. So this is really helpful because I can now press three on the numpad to go to side view and I can press G to grab and we can just click with our mouse wheel to constrain it to the Y axis. And I can now just bring this over to the amount that I want. So I'm just going to bring it over until those wheels are in the very center, just like that. And then I can also scale this down if I want to just make it a bit smaller. So in object mode, I'm going to select the main object again, and I'll tab into edit mode. So what I now want to do is I want to add some lights right here, and then also add some back lights right there. So I'm going to press shift A, and let's go right down here and add a circle. And then if you click on the add circle settings on the vertices here, I'm just going to set that to eight. So it has a nice low poly style, and then I can close that. So I'll press G to grab, click with my mouse wheel and bring it over. Now, because we have the clipping on, if I press a G to grab, you can see that that's connecting with the mirror and I do not want that. So I'm just gonna temporarily turn the clipping off, press G to grab and then S to scale. And now that that's over there, I can just turn the clipping back on. So I'm just gonna press G to grab and I'm just gonna stick this kind of right there, maybe scale it down a little bit. And then I want to rotate this over. So I'll press R, that will rotate it. I'm gonna rotate it on the X axis and then I wanna rotate it exactly up. So I can type in nine, zero and enter to rotate it over by 90 degrees. And then I can press G to grab and we're just gonna stick that in there. So I can now press E to extrude and I wanna extrude that out on the Y axis. So you can click with your mouse wheel to constrain it to the Y axis and I'll just bring it out a little bit. So I can now press E to extrude and then S to scale. We wanna scale that down and then I can press G to grab. We wanna bring it out on the Y axis just like that. And let's do that one more time. So I'll press E to extrude and then S to scale. I wanna bring that down and then I'll press G to grab and we want to bring it out on the Y axis just to make that kind of circular shape. And then to fill a face there, I can just press F to fill the face. And then again, I can see the normals need to be recalculated because the matte cap shading looks a bit weird. So I'll just select the entire object with A and then I can press shift N and shift N will recalculate the normals. And then I'm also going to select this face right here and I'm going to press shift D to duplicate it, kind of bring it up. And then I can press S to scale. We want to scale it down on the Z axis just like that. And then I can press G to grab and we're going to make it a little bit bigger and maybe pull it up a little bit. So I'm now going to press E to extrude. We're going to extrude that back just like that. And then that's, that is a little bit thick. So I'm just going to select this face and I'll press G to grab and we're going to bring it on the Y axis and just bring that in a little bit. And then again, I need to recalculate the normals. So I'll press L with my mouse hovered over the object and then I can press shift N to recalculate the normals. So now let's do the back. So I'm just going to tab in edit mode and I'm just going to select this face right here. And then I'll press shift D to duplicate, click with your mouse wheel and bring it over. And then let's just navigate to the back of the car and I'll press G to grab and bring that in. So right here, I want to create kind of a little handle so that you can open up the back of the car. So I'll press S to scale and a G to grab. We're just going to stick that into place right there maybe scale that up a little bit and then we can press E to extrude and we're going to extrude that back. So now you can see that we have that little piece there that looks kind of like a handle to open up the car. And then we need to make the backlights. So I can actually just select this uh, face right here and I'll press shift D to duplicate it. Let's bring it over and then I can bring it up and then I can press S to scale. We can kind of scale that up and also scale it up on the Z axis just like that. All right, so I'm now going to press E to extrude and I'm going to extrude that out just to make those back headlights. And then I'm also going to hover my mouse over the object and press L to select the entire thing. And then you can see the shading is a bit weird again, so I need to press Shift N to recalculate the normals. And then let's just scale that up a bit and just kind of bring it over. So the car modeling is almost done, but I do just want to take this right here and I want to push it in a little bit closer. So I'm going to press one on the numpad to go to the front view and I can tap into edit mode. And then I'm going to press Z, move my mouse over and let go to go into wireframe. And then just press A to make sure everything is deselected. And I also want to click right up here to go to the vertex select. Then I'll press B for the box select. And I'm just going to drag a box around the top of the car. I can press G to grab and then click with my mouse wheel to constrain it to the X axis. And I'll just bring that in. Basically, I just want a tiny little bit of an angle right there. So I can now tab back into object mode. Let's go back into the solid view by pressing Z and moving your mouse over. And you can see now the car just looks a little bit more stylized because it has that angle there. So just press Control S again to save and the modeling is finished. So now we can do the materials. So I'm going to press Z, move my mouse up and then let go to go into the rendered view. I'm just going to select the main car object and let's click right over here on the material properties. I can click on new and I can just call this one car paint. 
Let's change the base color. So of course you can change this to whatever color you want, but I'm going to set this to a bright blue color. I think that looks pretty nice for a car. So just like that. And let's also turn the roughness down a bit. So the car is just a little bit more shiny. So I now need to add different materials for all of these different objects. So I will tab into edit mode and I'm going to press a to deselect everything. So let's do the windows first. So I'm going to press three on the top of my keyboard to go to the face select. And then I can select this window and then I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'll just select all of the other windows so just like that and then I also want to select the mirror there so I'll hold down the shift key and I'll select this face and this face and this face all right so we want those to be a new object so let's just scroll up here and within this object's material slots I want to add a new material so I'm going to click on the plus right here and then I can just click on new and I can just call this material glass and then just make sure the glass is selected and then you're going to click on the assign button and then I can just press A to deselect that and I can actually go back into object mode. So we now have that as our glass. So let's scroll down here. Now to make it look like glass, I'm going to turn the transmission value right here all the way up to one. And then if I go right up here, I also want to turn the roughness value way down so it's very shiny. Now I don't actually want to be able to see through the glass because I do want it to just be kind of like a stylized glass. Later on in this video, I will be making a separate glass material for some glass that I actually want to be able to see through. Of course, if you wanted to, you could go in here and you could model like some chairs and things, um, but I just want it to look a bit stylized. So it'll look like glass, but you can't actually see through the glass. So I'm just going to go with that. Um, you could also change the roughness value if you want to be a bit more rough. And then also I'm just going to take the base color and make it a bit darker so that it's just a little bit darker and that looks much better. So I'm just gonna select this object and tab back into edit mode, and we're gonna create the bumper material. So I'm gonna hover my mouse over the bumper and press L, and then also go right over here, hover your mouse over this object and press L, and then I want the same material to be on the handles. So I'll press L to select that handle, hover your mouse over this handle back here and press L. So those are all of the pieces that we want for our new material. So again, within the material slots, we're gonna click on the plus here. Let's click on new. I can just call this bumper just like that and then just click on the assign button when that bumper is selected. Now on the base color here, I just wanna make this kind of like a dark gray. And then also I wanna turn the roughness up because I don't want it to be that rough. So let's turn the roughness up and maybe turn the base color down just a little. All right, that is looking pretty good. Although I do just wanna make the base color a little bit darker, just like that. And then if you want the bumper to be less reflective, you could also turn the specular down. You can see when you turn the specular down, it's gonna be less reflective. Let's tap back into edit mode, and then we're gonna do a lighter material for some other parts here. So I'll press A to deselect everything, and then just hover your mouse over these objects and press L and L. So I'm just gonna select those two um, cubes right there. Let's go to the back here and press L on this one there as well. Well. So we have this front piece right here selected, and then we also have the license plate selected. I'm going to scroll up, and then I'm going to click on the plus right here to add a new material in the slot. Let's click on it new, and I can just call this license plate. All right, license plate, and then click on the assign button to assign that. And then over here on the base color, I just want to make this one a lighter brown. So it's just going to be a light brown, kind of like that. So let's now make the materials for the lights on the front and the back. So I'll press L with my mouse hovered over the headlight, and then I'm gonna scroll up here. Let's click on the plus again to add another material. I'm gonna click on new, and I can just call this headlight. And then we can click on assign to assign that. Now, if you wanted to, you could change this to an emission material. So if you click on the surface, you could change this to an emission and that way it would be emitting light. But I don't really want to do that. I just want to make it a kind of a shiny yellow color. So on the base color here, I'm just going to make that a yellow color like that. Let's also scroll down and on the roughness here, I'm going to turn the roughness way down. So it's very shiny. So if I go back into object mode, you can see that is now very shiny and it kind of looks like a yellow tinted glass. So let's go right back here and we'll do the same thing on the back here. So I'll tab into edit mode and just press A to make sure everything is deselected. And then just hover your mouse over this object and press L. Let's scroll up here and I'm going to click on the plus right here to add a, another object. I can click on new and then I can just call this backlights. So backlights and then just make sure the backlights is selected and make sure this object is selected and you can press assign to assign that. Now on the base color here, I just want to make this like a really bright red. And then also right down here on the roughness, I'm going to make the roughness really small so it looks pretty reflective. 
All right, so back in object mode, you can see how that is looking. All right, so the car materials are finished, so we just need to do the materials for the wheels. So I'm gonna select the wheel, and then we can click on new, and let's first make this material tires. So I'm gonna rename that to tires, and then let's scroll down here. On the base color, I'm gonna make this fully black, and then let's also scroll down, and I'll also turn the roughness up a bit so it's a little bit more rough. And then also you could turn the specular down if you want it to look a little bit darker. All right, so just like that. So I now just need to make the material for the hubcap, so I'll tab into edit mode, and I want to go to the face select, so just make sure you're using the face select. I'll press A to deselect everything, and then what I want to do is select all these loops of faces. So I'm going to hold down the alt key and select that loop of faces, and then I can hold down the shift and alt key, and I'm going to select that and select that loop of faces, this one here and this one as well, and also alt and shift and select that one as well. And then let's also navigate in here and I'm gonna hold down the shift and alt key and select that ring of faces. And then for the last one right here, I can just hold down the shift key and select that face right there. Let's scroll up here and I'm gonna click on the plus here and then we can click on new. And for this material, I'm just gonna call this hubcap. And then let's click on the assign button with that selected. So it's gonna assign the hubcap material to those faces. And then for this object, I want it to be metallic. So we're gonna turn the metallic value all the way up to one. And then on the base color, I want to make that a bit darker, so it's a darker metal, so we'll make it a bit darker. And then also, if you wanted to, you could play around with the roughness, so I want to make mine a little bit more shiny. All right, so just like that, let's press Control S again to save, and that is it for our stylized low-poly car. Now, if you wanted to, you could keep this mirror modifier on the car there, um, but I actually just want to apply this because I want all of this car to be one object. So what I'm going to do is select this object right here. I'm going to select the wheels, and I can go over to the modifier process properties. Now on the mirror modifier, I can just click on this button and I can just click on the apply button to apply that. So if I tap into edit mode, you can see this is actual geometry. So now this object right here, I can just select it and I don't really need it anymore. So I'm just going to press X and then delete it. So I now want to join these together, but I first need to just select the car object. And then on the mirror here, I can click on this and then click on apply and that'll apply the mirror modifier. So I can now select the wheels and then hold down the shift key and select the car. And then I can press control J. So control J is going to join objects together. And if I tap into edit mode, you can see this car is now one object. All right, that's really good. So if I click on the car right here in the outliner, I can just rename this to car and then I'll press G to grab. I'm going to click with my mouse wheel and I'm just going to bring the car over here so it's out of the way. And then I can press H to hide that. All right, so that is the car. So let's do the next object now. All right, so the next object is going to be a traffic light. So I'm going to press shift A again. Let's go to mesh and then I'm going to go right down here and I'm going to add a circle. So once you've added the circle right behind me, you can click on the add circle settings and I'm just going to make sure the vertices here is set to eight. So it looks low poly and then I can close the add circle settings and then I'll press period on the numpad to zoom into it. So I'm going to tab into edit mode and I'm going to press S to scale and we will scale that down a bit. And then I'll press one on the top of my keyboard to go to the vertex select and I'm going to press F to fill a face. So I can now press E to extrude. We're going to kind of extrude that up a little bit and then I'll press I to inset. We're going to inset that face down and then I want to make the pull so I'll press E to extrude and I'll extrude this up and if you wanted to you could totally model a traffic light which is kind of hanging along a wire but for this traffic light I'm just going to make a traffic light on a big metal pole so now make sure you're still in edit mode and I'm going to press shift A and I want to add a cube I'll press G to grab we're going to bring this up on the Z axis and then I also need to scale this way down and I can also press period to zoom over to that. And I want to scale this up a little bit more. So I'm now just going to go to the face select and I'm just going to select this face and I'll press G to grab. We're going to bring it up on the Z axis just like that. And then I want to select this right here and I want to make this a little bit bigger so that then we can put the traffic lights on it. So I'll press E to extrude and then immediately after that press S and that will scale it and I want to scale this whole thing up and then you can see that it's scaling it more up but not out so I'll press S to scale and then click with your mouse wheel to constrain that and I just want to bring that out as well I could also scale it down on the z-axis to make that a little bit smaller so I'm now going to press E to extrude and that'll give it some thickness and I'll just bring that out basically just like that 
All right, and then I can double tap the A key to select everything. So we now have this big face right here and we can add the red, yellow, and green traffic lights. So I'm still in edit mode and I'm gonna press Shift A and I'm going to add another circle. And then just make sure on the add circle settings, make sure that is still set to eight. So I can press G and Z. We are going to bring that up and then I will press G to grab, click with your mouse wheel and bring that over. And then I can press S to scale and we can scale that down. And then I want to rotate that so I'll press R to rotate. We're gonna rotate it on the X axis and I'll type in nine, zero and enter to rotate it over by 90 degrees. And I can now scale this up a little bit and I'll press G to grab, click and let go with your mouse wheel to constrain it and I will just bring that in there. And then I'll press Z, move my mouse over and go into wireframe so I can see that and I'll bring it down on the Z axis and I'll scale that up a little bit more. So I'm now gonna click right up here to the vertex select and I'll press E to extrude and I want to extrude that out on the Y axis and I'm just gonna extrude that out to about there. Then I can press E to extrude and then S and we'll scale that down just to give that some thickness. And then I can press E to extrude and we're going to extrude that back and we'll extrude it back on the Y axis. And I'm just gonna extrude it back about that far. So I can now press E to extrude and then S to scale. We're gonna bring that down and we're now gonna be creating that light inside there. So I'll press G to grab. We're gonna bring it out on the Y axis and just push that out a little bit. Then I can press E to extrude again. Let's bring it out on the Y axis and make it a bit farther. And then I can press S to scale bring that down and I can press E to extrude again. We're gonna bring that out on the Y axis and then I can press S to scale that down again. So just like that. And then I can press F and that's going to fill a face in the center there. So I'm now going to press three on the top of my keyboard to go to the face select. And I want to hold down the shift key and I'm just gonna select all of these faces right up here. So I can now press E to extrude. We're gonna extrude those out just a little bit, but then I don't want these pieces right here on the bottom here to be extruded out anymore. So I'm gonna click right here to go to the vertex select, and then I'm gonna press B for the box select, and I'm gonna click with my mouse wheel so click and hold your mouse wheel and drag a box around those bottom vertices and then just let go. And that is going to deselect those vertices. So I'll press G to grab and I'll bring it out on the Y axis over like that. And then I'm just gonna select this vertex, shift select this vertex, and I can press G to grab. We're gonna bring it out on the Y axis just like that. And then if you click right back over here on the face select, I'm just gonna hold down the shift key and just select these faces again. And I can press G to grab and I'm gonna bring them out on the Y axis even farther. So just like that. Tap back into object mode and you can see that's looking pretty good. Although we do need to recalculate the normals again. So if you tap into edit mode, you can select everything and then I'll press shift N to recalculate the normals. And then also this traffic light here, it looks a little bit flat. So I'm gonna select the face and I will press G and Y we're going to bring that out a little bit and then I'm going to hold down the shift and alt key and that way I can select this ring of faces and I can press G again and Y and bring it out on the Y axis and then I want to do that one more time so I'll hold down the shift and alt key and just select that ring of faces and I can press G to grab we're going to bring it out on the Y axis and just bring that out so that traffic light now will be coming out a little bit more all right so back in edit mode I'm going to hover my mouse over this object and press L that'll select all the linked vertices and and then I'm going to press one on the numpad to go to front view. And I want to scale this up a little bit more so we can scale it up pretty big, but it can't be too big because I'm gonna be duplicating this three times. And so all of those need to be able to fit. So I need to just scale this down a little bit more. And then I can also press G and Y and bring it out just a little bit more. So I'll press one on the numpad again to go to front view. I'll press G and Z, we're gonna bring that down. And then to duplicate this, the shortcut key is Shift D. So press Shift D to duplicate. We're gonna bring that up on the Z axis, just place it right there. And then I'll press Shift D again. We're gonna press Z to bring it up on the Z axis and just stick that right there. All right, and there we have it. So there is our traffic light. And then I do think the whole traffic light is a little bit low. So I'm gonna go back into edit mode and I'm gonna press one on the top of my keyboard to go to the vertex select. And then I need to press Z, move my mouse over and go into wireframe. And then I'll press B for the box select. And I'm just gonna box select all of those vertices on the top here and I can press G and Z and we're just gonna bring those up just like that. All right, so let's do the materials now. So I'm gonna click right over here on the material properties. I can also press Z, move my mouse up and let go to go into the rendered view. And then I can click on new and I can just call this traffic light. 
project and then press Control S again to save your project. So this is gonna be pretty simple, just like the other materials. So the base color is gonna be all the way to black. And then I do wanna make it look pretty shiny. So I'll turn the roughness down so it's a bit more shiny. And then I'll tab into edit mode and I want to create the different colored lights. So I'm gonna to go to the face select and then I'm just going to select this face right here. Now a really cool trick you can do to easily select the other faces around it is I'm gonna press Control plus and Control plus is going to select all of the faces around the selected faces so I'll do that a few more times so I'll press control plus and control plus and I think I need to do that one more time and that is looking good so now that I have that selected I want to make that be a green light so again in the material slots I'm gonna click on the plus here I'll click on new I can just call this green light and then I want it to be emitting light so right here on the surface I'm gonna change it instead from principled to emission, so it'll be emitting light. And then click on the assign button just to assign that. So if I go into rendered mode now, you can see that is emitting light. I'm gonna turn the strength to two, so it's a little bit brighter. And then on the color, I can make this a bright green light. So we just need to do the same exact thing for these other ones. So I'll go back into solid view and I'm going to tab into edit mode and I'm just going to select this face right here. I'm now going to press control plus and just continue to hit control plus. I'm hitting the plus key on my numpad and that will select all of those faces. Let's scroll up here and then we need to make another light. So this one is going to be yellow. So I'm going to click on the plus here. Let's click on new and I can just call this yellow light. And then again, we wanna click on assign to assign those faces to the yellow light. And then if you go into rendered mode uh, on the surface here, I want this to be emitting light. So let's again, change this to the emission. So it's emitting light. And then on the strength here, I can just change this to two. So it's a little bit brighter. And on the color here, I'm just gonna change this to a bright yellow. And you know what I just realized? I believe most of the time the green light is actually on the bottom. So I actually need to click on the green light. I'm gonna change this to red light. I was looking at some reference images and I just noticed that it seems like the red is always on the top. It's funny how you don't really think about those subtle details, but then when you're actually creating it in Blender or something, you need to be able to get it accurate. So that's why using reference images are super important. So the red light is on the top, then the yellow, and then the green is on the bottom. So let's do the same thing. So back in the solid view, I'm gonna select this light right here. Or I'm actually gonna just select the very front face. I can now press Control plus and Control plus a few times to select the entire light. And then one more time, we're gonna click on the plus here to add a new material I can click on new here I want to rename this one to green light and then we can click on assign again to assign the green light to those faces. And then again, up in rendered mode, just press Z, move your mouse up to go into the rendered view. I wanna change the surface here to emission so it's emitting light. And on the strength here, I'm just gonna set that to two so it's a little bit brighter. And let's make this color a bright green color. All right, just like that. So that is it for our traffic light. So I'm gonna select the traffic light. And then over here in the collections, you can just rename this. So I can actually just select the traffic light name here and I can press control C to copy that and then right here I can double click on this to rename this and I can press control V to paste that so we now have the traffic light so I'm just gonna move this over kind of move it out of the way I'll just bring it over here and then I'm just gonna press H to hide that to get it out of the way so we can model the next thing so the next asset that we're gonna be creating is the bench so I'm gonna press shift a and let's go right down here and we're gonna add a cube I'm gonna tab into edit mode and let's press s to scale this cube way down and then I'll press G to grab and I'm just gonna click with my mouse wheel to constrain it to the x-axis put it over here and then I'll press s to scale we want to scale this out on the y-axis just like that so we're creating the base of our bench and then the bench is going to be right up here so let's tab back into object mode and I want to add a mirror modifier because the bench is going to be the same on both sides so over here on the modifier properties I can click on add modifier and I want to add the mirror modifier and because I moved this in edit mode the origin point is in the very center there so you can see now it's mirroring it from the origin point so I'll just bring this out a little bit farther and then I'm also going to scale it out on the y-axis a little bit more and then I'll press G to grab we're gonna bring it up on the z-axis and just stick it right there so that it's just sitting on the grid so I'm now going to click right here if you can't select the face then just click on the face select or press 3 on the top of your keyboard and I'll press G and Z and we're going to bring that down so I'm now gonna press E to extrude we're gonna bring it up like that and then I can press s we're gonna scale this and I want to scale it on the y-axis and I'm gonna make it much smaller 
and we pretty much want this to be a square. Then I can press E to extrude, and we're going to extrude this up. So this is basically going to be the legs for the bench. That is a little bit too high, so I will bring it back down a little bit. Then I'll press E to extrude again. We're going to bring this up, and I want this to be pretty much a square. And then I'm going to select this side, and we'll press E to extrude. Let's extrude that out. Click on this face right here, and I'll press E to extrude, and we will extrude that out as well. And then I want to make this metal piece going up as well, so I'm going to press Control R, click to add a loop cut and drag it over, and I want this to be about a square, and then just make sure you're in the face select, and I'm just going to select this face, and then I'm also going to press 3 on the numpad to go to the side view. So I'm now going to press E to extrude, we want to extrude this up, and I want to make the back kind of rotating a little bit, so I'll press G to grab and R to rotate, and I'll also scale it down just a little, and then I'll press E to extrude again, I'm going to press R to rotate and G to grab, just kind of move that like that, and then I'll press E to extrude again, I'll press R to rotate and G to grab, and then I'll press E to extrude and S to scale scale that up just like that. All right, that is looking good. These are also a little bit close to each other. So I'm going to double tap the A key to select everything. I'm going to press G to grab this and I'll click with my mouse wheel and bring it over on the X axis. So probably about that far. Now I want to add an armrest and I want the armrest to be going down here and then go down and connect with this. So I'm going to press control R. We're going to add another loop cut right here. And then right here, this should be about a square. You can just eyeball that and then press three on the top of your keyboard and we can select this and let's press three again to go to the side view. So I'm going to press E to extrude. Let's extrude that up and then I can press E to extrude and R to rotate and G to grab. We're going to kind of move that so it's slowly rotating. Then I can press E to extrude again, R to rotate, and G to grab. And then I want to fill this face and this face together. So I first want to delete the faces, so I'll press X, we're going to delete the faces. Let's select this one, I'll press X, and we're going to delete the faces. And then what I want to do is click right here to the vertex select. I'm going to hold down the shift key and select all these vertices, and then hold down the shift key and select all these vertices. So I now want to join these together, so I want to fill the faces. So to do that, I can press control E. And then right here on the third one, I'm going to click on bridge edge loops. And you can see it's bridged those edge loops and it's added faces there. And then it looks like this is slightly too high. So I'm just going to press B for the box select. I'm just going to box select all these vertices. So just like that, and I can press G and Z, and we're just going to bring that down a little bit. You could also scale it on the Z axis just a little. So I now want to create a wooden piece right here, and then also a wooden piece right here on the back. So let's tap back into edit mode, and I'm just going to navigate right over here. Let's go to the face select, and I'm just going to select this face. So I can now press Shift D to duplicate, bring it out, and I'm going to press S to scale it. I'm going to scale it down on the Z axis a little, and then I'm going to press S to scale, and we want to scale it out on the x-axis. And I'm going to bring it out so it's going all the way over. So just like that. Then I can press G to grab. We're going to bring it inside the metal there so it's connecting. And then I can press E to extrude. And we're going to extrude that out and just stick it right there. And because we have the clipping turned on, it's going to merge that together. And then we also need to delete that face in there. So just press X to delete and we can delete the faces. Now to make this look like wood, I want to just make it a little bit bumpy and random. So what I'm going to do is press Control R and then I'm going to scroll my mouse wheel out until there are three loop cuts. And then I can left click and then right Right click. And then I'm also going to add some loop cuts right here. So I'll press Control R, scroll my mouse wheel until there are two, and then I'm going to left click and then right click to place that. So we can now just give it some randomness. So if you select some vertices, you can press G to grab, select this vertex, G to grab, and you can just kind of select these and just move them around because we want this wood to look a little bit natural. So I'm just going to make some of it a little bit higher, some of it a little bit lower, um, and I'll do that for the bottom here as well, just to make it look like it's a natural piece of wood that has been used to create the bench. So this is going to be metal, and then this is going to be wood. So just kind of move these around. Um, you don't want to do it too much. You don't want to overdo it, but just moving some things around just a little. So you can see now that is looking much more random and natural. So I now want to duplicate this and put it on the backrest. So go back into edit mode and hover your mouse over the wood piece and press L, and that will select all the linked vertices. And I think I'll also scale the whole thing down just a little. 
and stick it more into the metal piece. All right, now to duplicate this, I'm first gonna press three on the numpad to go to side view, and I wanna be able to see through the mesh, so I'll press Z, hold down the Z button, go to wireframe and let go. So I can now press Shift D to duplicate this, and then R to rotate it, and I'm just gonna move it up here. I think I'll scale the whole thing down a little bit, and I'll rotate this up and just stick it right here. So I now want this wooden piece to kind of rotate with the metal, so I'm gonna use the box select by pressing B, and then I'm gonna click and hold with my middle mouse wheel and then I'll drag over that and then let go and that'll deselect all of that so I can now just press R to rotate and G to grab and we're gonna bring that over just like that and you could scale it down a little bit if you need to all right so let's go back into solid view and look at that all right so that's pretty good but you can see that this needs to be pushed more in so what I'm gonna do is go right here to the face select and then I'll select this face and then we're gonna hold down the shift key select these faces and then I can press G to grab, click with your mouse wheel, constrain it to the X axis and just stick that in there. All right, so there we go. That is looking pretty good. Now I do wanna make it just a tiny bit more random again. So I'll press one on the top of my keyboard uh, to go to the vertex select. And I'm just gonna, again, select some of these vertices and just give them a bit of randomness just so that they're a little bit different and it looks more like natural wood. And I kinda like the look where this is going up and down just a little bit. Um, I think it looks pretty nice. All right, so just like that, so the modeling is finished. So I want to actually apply the mirror modifier. So I'm just gonna make sure the mirror modifier is selected. And with your mouse hovered over the mirror modifier, you can press Control A and that will apply it. So now in edit mode, you can see this is all geometry. So I'm now just gonna do the same thing. So I'm just gonna select some of these vertices and just randomly move them around. And this way it won't look like it's been mirrored over and it'll look even more natural because some of these look exactly the same. Like right here, you can see this is, looks exactly the same same because it was using the mirror modifier. So I'm just going to give some randomness to these, just kind of move them around. You don't want to overdo it, but just a little bit will help. All right, so there we go, and that is the bench. So let's now add some basic materials. So I'm gonna click right over here on the material properties, and let's click on new, and I can just call this bench metal. I'm gonna call this one bench metal. And then let's go to the surface right here, let me make this a little bit bigger. So let's also press Z, move your mouse up, let go to go into the rendered view. Now on the base color for this bench, I want it to be a dark metal. So I'll make it even darker, pretty dark, and then I'll also turn the metallic value all the way up to one, so it looks metal, and then let's also turn the roughness value down a little bit so it's a bit more shiny and then I think I need to turn this up a little bit because it's just a little bit too dark all right so now we're going to create a couple different colors of wood a few different shades of wood so in the material slot on this object we're going to click on the plus here let's click on new and I can just call this bench wood light so we're going to make a light wood and then we'll make a dark wood let's actually click on the plus here and just make another one so I'll click on new and then for this second material I'm going to rename it to bench wood dark so we have our light wood and our dark wood so let's click on the light wood first and on the base color I'm just going to make this a brown color so let's just go like that make it a little bit darker and then we need to assign this light wood to some of these faces so I'm going to tab into edit mode and then click right here to the face select so I'm now going to hold down the shift key and I'm first going to select all of these faces right here hold down the shift key and you can also box select that if you want to select them all at the same time and use the box select to select all of those all right so that's what I'm going to have the light wood and then also right here I'm going to box select all of these so that's going to be the light wood and I'll also use the box select just to select these pieces right there. All right, so why I'm selecting all of these pieces is because I want it to look like different pieces of wood that have been connected together. So sort of like planks of wood. So with that selected now, I'm gonna click on the bench wood light and then just click on assign, that'll assign that. And then I think the base color should be a bit darker. And then also wood isn't really that shiny. So on the roughness, I'll just turn that up a little bit. Let's turn the base color down a little bit more. All right, so now I'm gonna make a darker wood. So again, let's just box select some of these. I'm gonna box select that. Let's go to the back here, use the box select to select that as well. And right down here, I'll use the box select by pressing B. We're gonna select that. Also, you can hold down the shift key and just select those faces and also right down here, I'll select that as well. So now that all of those are selected, those planks of wood. I'm going to click on the bench wood dark, click on assign, that's going to assign it. And then for this color, it's going to be pretty much the same color. So kind of a brownish, but it's going to be a little bit darker. So it's just going to be a slightly darker shade of brown. And then also just like the other wood, I do want to turn the roughness up a bit because I don't really want it to be shiny. All right, so that is good. So we just need to select the last 
bits of wood. So again, just hold down the shift key and you can just select all those pieces of wood. So just the last few planks of wood there. So I'll box select this. Also hold down the shift key. We're just going to select all of those pieces and those ones there. All right, and then also down here, we need to select those bottom vertices as well. So let's actually create another shade of wood. So I'm gonna click on the plus here to add a new material. And then what we can do is we can actually click on this drop down here and we can just add the bench wood light. So this is the same material as this one up here, but I now want to duplicate the material. So it's a different material, but it uses the same information. So to do that, I can click on this little button here and it looks like a little piece of paper. So I'm gonna click on that and that will duplicate the material. Material. So I can now just change the name to bench wood med for medium because we have a light one and dark one and a medium one and then make sure this is still selected and make sure the wood bench medium is selected and you can click on assign. All right now if you go into object mode it looks exactly the same but if we just change the base color we can just make it a little bit darker and that's looking pretty good and then all of this wood just looks a little bit bright so I'm going to make everything a little bit darker so I'll make that a bit darker the wood dark, I'll make that a little bit darker. So you can just select the different materials and then change the base color. And there we have it. So there is the low poly bench. Um, so let's just select this. And just like all the other objects, I'll press G to grab, constrain it on the X axis. And we're just gonna bring it over here just so that it's out of the way. And then I'm just gonna press H to hide this object. And then I can press control S again to save. So the next object that I'll be creating is the mailbox. So just press shift C again to make sure the 3D cursor is in the very center there. And I'll press shift A and we're gonna start with a cube. Let's press period on the numpad to zoom over to the cube. And then I can tab into edit mode and I'm just gonna scale it down a bit. Then I'll press G to grab. We'll bring it up on the Z axis and just stick it right there so it's on the top of the grid. And then I'm gonna select this face right here and I'll press G and Z and we are going to bring this up because right now we're creating the wooden pole that the mailbox is gonna sit on. And then also I wanna make a little detail here on the top. So I'll press E to extrude and then S and we're gonna scale that out. Then I'll press E to extrude again and then I'll press S to scale. We're gonna scale that up and out. Let's also bring it up a little bit. Then I can press E to extrude again and then S to scale and we're going to scale that down and also bring it down on the Z axis a little. So I can now press I to inset. We're going to inset that and then we'll create one more detail here. So I'll press E to extrude, bring that up and then I can press E to extrude again, click to place that and then I'll scale it down with S and I'll make that really small. All right, that is good. And then also right here, I wanna add a bevel. So I'm gonna go right here to the vertex select, and then I can hold down the Alt key and select that loop of vertices. Then I can press Control B and just add a little bevel just like that. All right, that is looking pretty good. Um, so we are now going to add another piece of wood coming out here, and the mailbox is gonna sit right here on top of that piece of wood. So I'm gonna tab into edit mode. Let's go right down here, and I'm gonna go to the face select, and then let's just select this face. So I'll press Shift D to do duplicate this and I'll bring it up on the Z axis and then I'll also press R to rotate. We want to rotate this on the we want to rotate this on the X axis and then I'll type in nine zero and enter to rotate it over by 90 degrees. Then I can bring it over on the Y axis and then I'll scale this down a little bit because I want this to be a little bit smaller than this piece of wood and then press three to go to the side view. And also I'll press control S again to save my blender file. I'll press G to grab. We're going to bring this up on the Z axis a little bit and I'll also bring it over kind of about there because we want enough space for the mailbox to be right there. So I'm now going to press E to extend extrude and we are going to extrude this out and I'm going to extrude it out to about there so the mailbox is going to be right there. And then also I'm going to select the piece of wood on the bottom and I'll scale it so I'll press S to scale it and I want to scale it on the Y axis and just bring that down a little bit. So now we have the slanted look right there and there um, and I do think that looks pretty cool. And then it looks like I need to recalculate the normals because the shading is a bit off so I'll double tap the A key to select everything and I'll press shift N that'll recalculate the normals. And then I want to have a little bit of a support for this piece of wood so I'm going to hover my mouse over this object and press L and that is going to select all the linked vertices and then you can press 3 on the numpad to go to side view. So I'll now press Shift D to duplicate, and I'll press R to rotate, and then S to scale. And we are going to stick it right there. So let's just scale that up a little bit more. We're just gonna stick it right there. So we're basically creating a support piece um, for that piece of wood. All right, so let's create the mailbox. We're gonna just put the mailbox right there. So I'm gonna tab into edit mode, and then I will just select this face again. I'll press Shift D to duplicate. 
well, let's bring it up on the z-axis and then we can bring it over on the y-axis and then i want to rotate this so i'll press r to rotate let's rotate it on the x-axis and then i can type in nine zero and enter to rotate that over and then i'll press three to go to the side view and i want to press s to scale we'll scale it up a little bit and then i'll press g to grab and i just want the mailbox to be going over this lip of the wood just slightly so just like that and then i want to scale the mailbox up just a little bit more so i can now press e to extrude and i want it to extrude the mailbox out like that all right that is pretty good i'm going to select this bottom face and i'll press g and z and just bring it down a little bit and then also right here i want to select this and i'll press g to grab and bring it it down on the z-axis a little bit more so i can now press e to extrude we want to extrude this up and i want to make the mailbox rotating over on the top so i'll now press s to scale we just want to scale this on the x-axis like that and then i can also bring it up a little bit more so i can now press e to extrude again and then i'll scale it again so i'll press s to scale we want to scale it on the x-axis and just bring it down like that and then also you can see that this isn't going quite high enough so i can just select this entire thing and move it up so i'm going to actually go right up here and i can just select this top face right here and then what you can do is you can press Control plus so i'm holding down the control key and hitting the plus on my numpad and that is going to select all the faces that are nearby so I'm going to do that until those are all selected so control plus and then i can press g to grab we're going to bring it up on the z-axis and just make it a little bit higher um, that is much better all right so back in edit mode now i want to go back over here to the mailbox and i'm going to select the front of the mailbox and then i'm going to hold down the shift key and i'll select the other faces so that is all the front of the mailbox so i want to add a little lip here and kind of make it look like there's a door so i'll press i to inset we're going to inset that down just a bit like that and then i can press e to extrude that in and just bring it in like that and then i want to have a little handle that you can grab to kind of open up the mailbox so i'm going to select this top face right here and i can press shift d to duplicate let's bring it over on the y-axis and then it's way too long so i'll press s to scale we want to scale it down on the y-axis and i'm going to make it really small like that so we now have that little piece there i'll press g to grab let's bring it over on the y-axis and then i can also bring it down on the z-axis and i'll scale it down a bit more just kind of bring it up there so i'm now going to press e to extrude and we are going to extrude that up and then let's also press three on the numpad to go to side view i can press e to extrude place that there press r to rotate that and then press g to grab e to extrude r to rotate and g to grab We'll do that one more time, E to extrude that, R to rotate it, and G to grab it. All right, and that is a little bit too big, so I'm going to hover my mouse over the object and press L to select everything, all of the linked vertices. I can scale the whole thing down, and then let's move it down a little bit and I'll move it back a little bit. And I can also press S to scale, and I can scale it on the x-axis if I want it to be a bit thinner. So now let's create the flag there on the side of the mailbox. So I'll just select this face, and I can press Shift D to duplicate it. Then I can scale it way down, and I can just move it over, and I just wanna bring it out a little bit, and then I also wanna scale it up. So let's press S to scale. We'll scale it on the y-axis a little bit, and then scale the whole thing up and I'm gonna bring it up right about there. So I can now just press E to extrude and we are going to extrude that back just like that. And then let's also press Control R to add a loop cut. So Control R, click and add a loop cut right there. Let's bring the loop cut over and just stick it right there. And then I want to make that little part there on the flag which is going down. So I'm going to go back to the face select and then I'm just going to select this face right here. So I can now just press E to extrude and let's extrude that down and we'll bring it down about that far and then i'll press s to scale it and we'll scale it on the y-axis and just bring that down the normals need to be recalculated again so just double tap the a key to select everything and you can press shift n and that'll recalculate the normals and now that looks correct all right so the modeling is finished so we can now do the materials so i'm going to press z move my mouse up and go into the rendered view and i can just select the object and then let's click on new here and i can just call this mailbox wood and then on the color here, I wanna make this a brown color. So this is just gonna be the wooden piece there. All right, that is good. So I now need to add two colors. I need to add a metal color for the mailbox and then a red color here for the flag. So I'll tab into edit mode. I'm gonna press A to deselect everything. And then I'm gonna hover my mouse over this object and press L to select the linked vertices. And then also hover your mouse over this object, the little handle and press L to select it. So now in the object's material slot, I need to click on the plus here to add a new material. Let's click on new, and I can just call this mailbox. 
And then let's also go right down here. And on the base color, I'm going to make this a darker color. And you can't really see it doing anything. That is because we need to select the mailbox and then click on assign. And there you now you can see the mailbox is that color. So I'll turn the base color down a bit. And then I do want it to be metallic. So right down here in the metallic value, I can turn that to one. And then we can also turn the roughness value down if we want to make it a bit more shiny. And then now that it's a bit more shiny, I do want to turn the color up a little bit. So back in edit mode now, I want to deselect everything. And I'm going to hover my mouse over this object and press L to select the linked vertices. And then again in the material slot, I can click on the plus here to add a new material. Let's click on new. And this one I can call this mailbox flag. So mailbox flag. And then right down here, let's click on the base color and we're going to make this a red color and maybe just make it a little bit darker. And then make sure you click on the assign button so that it assigns the mailbox flag to those faces. And then also I will turn the roughness down a bit. So that is it for the mailbox object. So then right over here in the outliner, we can just rename this to a mailbox. Let's just bring this over to the side. And then again, with this object selected, I can press H and that will hide the object. All right, the next one we're going to be creating is the street light. So let's press shift A and to start off the street light, I'm going to add a mesh circle and then right behind me, click on the add circle settings, open that up. And on the vertices here, I'm going to change this to eight so that it is low poly and then I can close that. Let's tab into edit mode and I want to scale the whole thing down a bit and then I can go right up here to the vertex select. So I can now press E to extrude. Let's extrude this up on the Z axis. And also I don't need to be in rendered mode. So I'll hold down the Z button and go to the solid. All right, that is better. So I'm now going to press E to extrude. And then right after that, I'll press S and we're going to scale that down a bit, bring that down a little, and then I'll press E to extrude. We're going to bring this up on the Z axis and I'll make this pretty high. And then once you have that as high as you want, I'm going to press three to go to the side view. Let's just zoom in here and I'm going to press E to extrude and then R to rotate and then G to grab. Bring that over a little bit, E to extrude again and R to rotate and G to grab and then E to extrude and R to rotate and G to grab. So pretty much like that, we're just going to bring that over and then we'll extrude it out one more time and we'll extrude this one out on the Y axis. And then to make sure this is perfectly flat, I'm going to press S to scale. And then I'll hit Y to scale on the Y axis. And then I can type in zero and then enter. So we're basically flattening all of those vertices. Let's press period on the numpad to zoom over to it. And I want to now give this some thickness, make it bigger. So I'll press E to extrude. And then right after that, press S to scale. We're going to scale that up. Let's also press S to scale and we're going to scale this out on the X axis and make it a bit thicker. And then I can also press G and Z and we're going to bring the whole thing up a bit. So I want to select this vertex right here and I'll press G and Z. We're going to make that a bit more flat. We can also select this vertex and shift select this vertex and we can press G and Z and bring that down. And then I also want to scale these vertices up a bit like that. I can also select this vertex and I'll press G and Z, bring that down. And then I'm going to hold down the shift key and select all of these three and I'll press G and Z and bring that down. So now I just want to select all of the outer vertices and extrude them out. So I'm going to go to the vertex select and I'll hold down the alt key and then select that loop of vertices. So I can now just press E to extrude and I'm going to bring this out on the Y axis, just bring that out there. Then I can scale this up a little bit. So I'll just scale up a little bit like that. Then I can press E to extrude. We're going to bring it out on the Y axis again, and then I'll scale that down a bit and then E to extrude, bring it out on the Y axis and scale that down a little bit. And then also right down here, I want all these faces to be flat. So I'm going to go to the face select and I'm going to hold down the shift key and select all these faces. Then I can press S to scale. We want to scale these on the Z axis and then I'll type zero and enter to flatten them. And then I can also press G and Z and we're going to bring that whole thing down a bit. All right. And then right in here, I need to fill that face. So I'm going to go back to the vertex select and then I'm going to hold then the alt key and just select that ring of vertices and I can press F to fill that. And then also if I just hold down the shift key and select all of these top vertices, I can press G and Z. So G to grab Z on the Z axis and bring that down a little. All right, there we go. That's pretty good. So now I just want to add a light right here. Um, but first I'm going to go back to the face select. I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm just going to select these bottom faces here. And then I can press I and I is going to inset those faces and I'll bring that in. And then I can press E to extrude and we will extrude that back. And then once again, I need to recalculate the normals. So I'm going to tab into edit mode and select everything and I'll press shift N and that will recalculate the normals. And then I can tab back into object mode. So we need to create two materials. We need to create 
like the painted metal and then we also need to create the light so let's click on new make a new material within this object's material slots and i'm going to rename this to street light metal and then let's go into rendered mode by holding down the z key moving your mouse up to go into rendered view and then let's turn the base color to kind of like a light gray and then we'll also turn the roughness down so i'll turn that roughness down so it's a bit more shiny all right so now we need to create uh, the light right there so i'll tab into edit mode i'm just going to hold down the shift key and just select those faces right in there we need to make that a light and then within this object's material slots let's click on the plus here we can click on new and then i'm going to rename this second material to just street light so street light this is going to be the object that is actually emitting light so on the surface here i'm just going to change this to an emission and then just make sure the street light material is selected and you can click on assign and that'll assign the emission to those faces and then on the strength here i do want this to be a bit brighter so i'm going to turn it to like a five and because i turned on the bloom effect it's going to be a bit brighter so i think i'll actually turn this to maybe like a six so it's a bit brighter and then on the color here i can just make this a very very slight yellow tint you could also make it slightly blue if you want i think yellow looks pretty good all right there we go so there is our street light so let's click on the street light and then right up here in the outliner i can just rename this to street light so the object is now named street light i can just bring it over here to the side and then again i'll just press h to hide the object to get it out of the way all right, so the next thing we're gonna be creating is the low poly building. So to create that, I'm gonna press Shift A and I'm going to add a cube. Let's tab into edit mode and then I'll press S to scale and I wanna scale this up so it's pretty big, just like that. Then I'll press G to grab and we're gonna bring it up on the Z axis and put it right there on the grid. And then I'm also gonna go right down here and I'm gonna click on the face select and then I can just select this face and I want to press X to delete it. And I'm just gonna delete the faces because I don't need that bottom face down there. Now I want to add a little lip, kind of like a foundation on the bottom of the house. So let's click right here on the vertex select, and then I'll hold down the alt key and select this bottom ring of vertices. So I can now press E to extrude, and then I'll press S to scale, and I will just scale that foundation up a little bit, and then I'll press E to extrude, I'll bring it down on the Z axis, and just bring that down a little. So that is good. Let's double tap the A key to select everything and I'll press G to grab and we're gonna bring everything up on the Z axis. And then I'm gonna click right back here to go to the face select and I wanna select this face and I'll press G and Z and we are going to make this building quite a bit higher. Now I wanna give a little detail kind of like this, kind of a little lip in the center there. So I'm gonna press Control R, I'll add a loop cut, bring this loop cut up a little bit. Then I'll press Control R, click to place that and bring that up a little bit. So I now want to extrude these out. So I'm gonna click right here to go to the face select. I'll hold down the alt key and select this loop of faces. And then I can press E to extrude and then press S to scale. We wanna scale it out, but I don't want to scale it out on the Z axis because it's slowly going up as well as out. So I'll press shift Z and that will not include the Z axis. So I'll just bring it out and click to place that there. Let's navigate right up here and I wanna add another lip here on the top. So to do that, I'm gonna select the top face and I'll press E to extrude. And then right after that, I'll press S to scale. And we're gonna scale that out a bit to about there. Then I can press E to extrude. We're gonna bring it up on the Z axis and I'll bring it up to about there. And then I want to press I and that is going to inset that and I'm gonna bring that down. And then I can press E to extrude and I want to extrude that down. And that way we're gonna have kind of a little lip there on the top of the building. And then while we're up here, we might as well model some little things here on the top so I'm going to be modeling some little metal boxes so I'm going to press shift D to duplicate this and I will scale it down and then I'm also going to scale it on the Y axis so press S to scale and Y to bring it over on the Y axis I'll press G to grab and I'm just going to stick this kind of about there and then I'll press E to extrude we're going to extrude that down and then I'm going to select this face right here and I'll press shift D to duplicate this and I'm going to scale this down and we'll just make a second box um, that's a little bit smaller. So I'll press E to extrude and we will extrude that down. And then you can see the shading is a bit messed up. You can see um, these boxes look a little bit dark. So I'm just gonna double tap the A key and I can press Shift N and there we go. Now the normals have been recalculated. And then I wanna add one more box just kind of over here. So I'm gonna select this face right here. I'll press Shift D to duplicate. We can just bring that over. I can also press S to scale and we can scale it on the Y axis. So we'll scale it out a bit. And I'm just gonna bring it down. So bring it down on the Z axis and then I can press E to extrude and we're gonna extrude that down there. 
and I think I will bring that down a little bit. And then again, I need to select everything because you can see the normals need to be recalculated because the shading is a bit weird. So I'll press shift N and that'll recalculate the normals. So on the front of the building right here, I want to add a door. So I'm going to press control R. Let's add a loop cut here. So I'll click and drag and put that over there. That's going to be the side of the door. I'll press control R again. Let's bring this over for the other side of the door. And I do also think that everything is probably a little bit too high. Um, you could change it to whatever size you want. I'm just going to select everything with the A key in edit mode, and then I can press S to scale. We're going to scale it down on the Z axis and just make it a little bit smaller. And then I can press G and Z, and we're going to bring it down a little bit farther. So that is looking good. Let's press control R now to add a loop cut and finish that door. So I'll add a loop cut right here. We're going to bring it up and put it right there. So right here, that is going to be our door. So let's press three or click right here to the face select. I'm gonna select this face and I want to extrude the face back. So I'll press E to extrude and we're gonna extrude that back and just bring it back like that. And then I want to create a door frame. So I will press three or click right up here to the face select and I'm gonna select this face right here. And then I'll hold down the shift key and I'm gonna select these other faces. So I can now press shift D to duplicate and then I'll press S to scale and we're gonna scale that up to make the door frame a bit thicker. And I want the thickness here to be the same as the thickness going back and forth. So I'm gonna scale this on the X axis. So I'll press S to scale and X to scale it on the X axis like that. And then I can scale it as well on the y-axis to make it a bit thicker. So that is looking good. So I can now press E to extrude and then S to scale and we're gonna scale that down, but then I'm going to press shift Y and that way it will not scale it on the y-axis, just the X and the Z-axis. So I'll scale it down, click there to place that. And then I need to press S to scale we're gonna scale it in on the X axis and I'll bring it down a little bit. So that's looking good. And we now have that door frame right there. Now I do also need to navigate down here and I'm gonna select this face. We'll shift select that face and I'm gonna press S to scale. We'll scale it on the Z axis, so hit Z. Then I can type in zero and enter just to flatten that. So I'm now going to make a door handle. So I'll press shift A and to make the door handle, I'm gonna use a cylinder. Now, once you add the cylinder, it's right there. Now on the cylinder settings, if you click right there behind me on the cylinder settings, I'm gonna change the vertices to eight so that it is very low poly and then I can close that. So I can now press G to grab, S to scale and G to grab. And we're just gonna stick this right here where the door handle would be on the door and I'll scale that down a little bit. Okay, so I'll press period on the numpad to zoom into this and then I can press R to rotate. Let's rotate it on the X axis and I'll type in nine zero and enter to rotate it by 90 degrees. And then you can just stick it into place, maybe scale it down a little bit. So I'm now going to select this face and I'll press E to extrude and S to scale and then E to extrude, bring that out a bit more, and then E to extrude and S to scale, and we're gonna scale that down. So just a very simple low poly door handle. I think I'll scale the whole thing down a little bit. So I'm gonna hover my mouse over the object and press L, and then I can press S to scale it and stick it in. I could also scale it out a little bit. So we're now gonna create some windows. So we're gonna create some windows down here, and then on the second story, we're gonna create a slightly different variation of the windows. So back in edit mode, I'm gonna press Shift A, and I'm gonna go right here and add a plane. I'll press G to grab, and I can also rotate this. So I'll rotate this on the X axis, and I'll type in nine, zero, and enter to rotate that over. I'll press G to grab, and I'm gonna bring that over. I'll scale that down a little bit, and then I'll press S to scale. Let's scale it out on the X axis and I'll scale it out to like that. So I can now press I and I will inset that face and I'm gonna bring that down there and click to place that. And then I can press E to extrude and we're gonna extrude that window in a little bit. So I'm now going to click right here to go to the vertex select and then holding down the alt key, I can select that ring of outer vertices. So I can now press E to extrude and then click with your mouse wheel to constrain it to the Y axis and bring it in and then click to place that. So we've basically just created a little window with a window sill. Now let's tab back into object mode. And before I duplicate all the windows and move them around, I do wanna create some materials. So I'll press Z, move my mouse up, let go to go into the rendered view. And I'm gonna click on new here to add a new material in the material slot. So this material, I can just call this building. 
And of course you can use whatever color you want, but for the base color, I'm going to use kind of a tannish sort of light yellowish color. So something like that. And then I will also bring the roughness up a bit. So it's more rough. All right. So right back here in the material slots, I'm going to click on the plus here and then I can click on new and I'm going to make this window sill. So I'm going to rename this to window sill. And I now want to tap into edit mode and I need to select some objects and then assign the window sill to those faces. So I'm going to press L with my mouse hovered over this object, make sure the window sill is selected and you can click on assign and that'll assign that. And then I just want to take the base color and make it a little bit darker. So it's going to be white, but just a little bit darker. Now we need to make another uh, material for the window. So let's click here to the face select and I'm just going to select this face. And then again, right here in the material slot, I'm going to click on the plus here. Let's click on new and I can just call this window. So let's scroll down here and we're going to change the window material. So I'm going to turn the transmission all the way up to one and then let's scroll back up and I need to select the window and click on assign and that will assign the window to the window material. Now also down here, I'm going to turn the roughness down. So let's turn the roughness pretty far down and I don't want to really be able to see through the windows. I just want this to be kind of some stylized glass. So it looks like glass, but you actually can't see through it. If you wanted to, of course, you could go in here and you could model um, some different things inside the house and then see through the window, um, but I am not going to do that. So I'm going to take the base color and just make that a bit darker. Um, so we now have some simple glass just like that. So let's do a few more materials. So I'm going to do the foundation material or the concrete. So I'm going to tab into edit mode. Let's navigate right over here. I'm going to hold down the alt key, select that ring of faces, and then hold down the shift and alt key. We're going to select that ring of faces Then also hold down the shift key and select that one as well. And then we're going to do the same thing up here. So hold down the shift alt key and select that ring of faces, shift alt, select that one and also this one as well. And then also up here, we're gonna select that ring of faces and that ring of faces and that one as well. And then also in here, we're gonna do that one. And then I'm also just gonna hold down the shift key and I will select these three faces right there. All right, so I'm gonna click on the plus here. Let's click on new. And for this new material, I'm gonna call this foundation or you could also just rename it to concrete or something like that. So I'm going to click on the assign button to assign that. And then on the base color, I'm going to make this a gray color. So let's make it a nice gray color. I think that looks very nice. And then also let's turn the roughness. Let's go to the roughness, turn the roughness a bit up. So it's a bit more rough. And then I think I'll turn the base color down just a little bit more. All right, so that's good. Let's tab in edit mode and then I'll deselect everything. And then up here, I want to make these a similar material, but they're going to be a bit lighter. So I'm going to press L and L and L. So just hover your mouse over the objects and press L. So let's click on the plus here again. And then in the drop down, I can actually search for the foundation material. And we're going to add the foundation material into this slot again but then I want to duplicate it so it's a separate material. So I'm going to click on this button right here that's going to duplicate it and I can just call this boxes or whatever you want to call this. All right, so I'm now just going to click on the assign button and it's going to assign the boxes material to those boxes up there. And then I just want to make that a little bit brighter. So on the base color, I'm going to make it a little bit brighter like that. And then also I'm going to click back on the foundation. So click the, on the foundation one and I'll make it just a little bit darker so there's a bit more contrast. So I will do more materials later Later, but we can now duplicate those windows and just put all the windows around. So I'm going to tab in edit mode and I'm just going to make sure everything is deselected. And then with your mouse hovered over the window, you can press L and that'll select the entire window. And then I'll press seven to go to top view. And I can also hold down the Z button and go over to wireframe. So I'll now press shift D to duplicate that, bring it over here. I'm going to press R to rotate and I can type in nine zero. And then I actually need to type in negative after I type in nine zero. You can see right up here, the rotation rotation says uh, 90 because we are rotating it over by 90 degrees. But if I hit negative, now it's going to say negative 90 and then I'll hit enter. So now if I look right there, go into rendered mode, you can see that's looking correct. Let's also press G to grab. We're going to bring this over on the X axis and we're just going to stick it pretty close right up there. So now I'm going to press shift D to duplicate this. I'm going to bring it over on the Y axis just like that. And then I also want to make another window here and another window back here. So I'll press shift D to duplicate it. We're going to bring it over and then G to grab. We're going to bring it over on the Y axis. And then I can also press R to rotate. We're going to rotate this on the Z axis. And then I can type in nine and zero and then enter. And then again, I can press G to grab and let's bring it back on the Y axis and just stick it into the side there. All right, that's looking pretty good. So I just want to make one more window over here. So I'm going to press shift D to duplicate, bring that over. 
I can rotate it again. So press R to rotate on the Z axis and I'll type in nine, zero and enter. And then I can press G to grab. We'll, we're gonna bring it over on the Y axis. Just bring it over there. And then I can press G and we're gonna bring it over on the X axis and just stick that in there. All right, let's go up into rendered mode. That's pretty good. So I wanna add just a few more windows around here, um, but the windows up here on the second story, they're gonna look a little bit different. So let's go back into edit mode and I'm gonna select one of the top faces of the window sill. I'll press shift D to duplicate. Let's bring it up on the Z axis and I'll bring it up just like that. Then I can press S to scale and we're gonna scale it on the X axis and I'm gonna bring that down. So I can now press E and E will extrude that and I'm gonna bring that down. And then I'm gonna hover my mouse over this object and press L to select the entire thing. And I'll press S to scale. We're gonna scale that down. And then I can press G and Z and bring it up. All right, so I'm now gonna press Control R to add a loop cut. I'm gonna add a loop cut right up there. And then I can press Control R to add a loop cut and we're gonna add another one up there. So I'm now gonna click right here to go to the face select and I'm gonna select this face and then hold down the shift key and select this face. So I'll now press I to inset and we're gonna inset those faces because we're gonna be creating two windows. Um, so bring it in like that. And then also I don't want there to be too much of a space right there. So I'm actually just gonna click right here to go to the edge select and then I can just select this edge and I'll press G and Z and we're gonna bring that down. Select this edge right here and I can press G and Z and we are going to bring that one up. All right, so click back over here on the face select and I'm now just going to select this face, hold down the shift key and select this face. So I can press E to extrude. We're gonna extrude that in click to place that. And then also let's click right over here on the window, so the window material, and make sure those are still selected and you can click on the assign button. So now we have some cool windows there. So I now just wanna do the same thing as these windows. So I'm gonna duplicate the windows and just put a few here and there around. So I'm gonna tab into edit mode and I'll hover my mouse over this object and press L to select the linked vertices. And then I can press shift D bring it over on the X axis. I'll press R to rotate. Let's rotate it on the Z axis and then I'll type in nine and zero and enter. And then I can bring that over there and I'll bring this one to about there. I'll press shift D to duplicate. Let's bring it over on the Y axis again. And then again, I can rotate this. So R to rotate Z to rotate it on the Z axis and then nine and zero and enter. And then I can bring that over. And then for this one back here, I'll have two. So I'll press shift D to duplicate, bring that over. You could also do three if you want to. If you duplicated that, that looks pretty cool. I'm not gonna do that, I'm just gonna do two. So I'm gonna press L to select this window, shift D to duplicate. We're gonna bring it over on the X axis and then I can rotate this on the Z axis and I'll rotate it by a 90 degrees. And then bring this over, so G to grab, bring it over. And then also I wanna bring it back a little bit. So I'll press G to grab, and we're gonna bring it over on the X axis. All right, that is looking very nice. So now I just need to kind of finish up this door right here. So I'll just navigate down here, and I'm first going to just select one of the pieces of the door frame, and then I'll just press L to select the linked vertices. Let's click on the plus right here to add a new material in the slot. I'm gonna click on new. We really are building up a lot of materials materials in this object. So on the material here, I'm just going to rename this to frame or door frame. And then you can click on the assign button to assign that. Now on the base color, I'm going to make this a dark color and a brown color, maybe like that. Something that looks good for a maybe a wooden door frame. You could also use the white if you wanted to, if you want to have a white door frame and kind of match this frame right here. I'm going to use a dark wood frame, so like that. And then let's tab in edit mode and I'm going to select the door. And then again, let's click on the plus here to add a new material in the slot. I'm going to click on new and I can rename this one to door and then click on the assign button. So then for this one on this door here, I'm I'm just going to make this a brown color as well, but this one is just going to be a little bit of a lighter brown color. That's a little bit too red. I want to make it a bit more just of a regular brown color. All right, that's looking very good. So I just want to do the door handle now. So I'll tab in edit mode. I'll press A to deselect everything, and then I'm going to press L to select the linked vertices. So we've selected the entire handle. So let's click on the plus again to add another material in the slot, and then let's click on new, and I can just name this handle or door handle, whatever you want to call it, and then make sure you 
you click on the assign button to assign the handle to the actual door handle. And then on the base color, I'm just gonna make this a dark color. And then I'll also turn the roughness down a bit so it looks a bit more shiny. All right, so press Control S again to save. There is just one more thing I wanna do to this house. And that is that I wanna add a little covered piece right here. So I'll tab in edit mode and then I'm going to just select this face right here. I'll press Shift D to duplicate. I'll bring this face down and then I can press S to scale. Let's scale it down on the Z axis like that. And then I can also scale it up on the X axis to make it a bit longer and I can kind of bring that over and just stick it right there in front of the door. So I'm now going to go right here to the vertex select and I'm just going to select this vertex and hold down the shift key and select this vertex. So we have both of these selected. Let's press G to grab and we want to bring these back on the Y axis. So I'm going to bring them back right there. And now that we've brought in that back right there, I'm going to just hover my mouse over this object and press L. That's going to select the entire thing. And then I can press E to extrude, and we want to extrude this on the Y axis. So just extrude it back on the Y axis like that. All right, and also press G and Y. Make sure you bring it all the way back, so like that. So I'm now just going to go right here to the face select, and I'm gonna select this face right here, and I can press X to delete, and I wanna delete the faces. So there we go, we now have that little covered area. So I'm now just going to hover my mouse over this object and press L and that is going to select all the linked vertices and to give it a little bit of thickness I'll just press E to extrude and then I'll press S to scale and then I will just scale the entire thing down like that and then I can press 3 to go to side view I'll press Z move my mouse over and let go to go into wireframe and I'll press G to grab and I'm just going to move this down so that this piece right here is flat with the bottom so now you can see that has some thickness although I do want to press S to scale and we are going to scale it up on the x-axis um, and bring it out like that. So there we go, now we have some thickness there. And then also I need to select everything in edit mode and I'll press shift N to recalculate the normals. All right, let's go into rendered mode, see how that's looking. So that's pretty good. I do just wanna give this a blue material. So in edit mode, I'm going to hover my mouse over this object and press L to select the linked vertices. And let's click on the plus here and I can click on new, we'll add another material and I can just call this cover cause it's gonna kinda cover the front of the door and then click on assign with that selected and then and right here the, for the base color, I'm gonna make that a blue color, something like that. You could also maybe duplicate this and kind of put them over the windows. If you want to do that, that might be kind of cool. So just press Control S again to save, and that is it for the house model. So we now have a nice low poly house. So I'm just gonna select the house and I'm gonna bring it over here just to get it out of the way because we still have more objects to create. And then I do also wanna rename this object. So right here on the cube here, I'm just gonna rename this to a building in the outliner so it's now renamed it to a building and then I can press the H key and that will hide that object. All right, so the next asset that we'll be creating is some outdoor seating. And this is the kind of thing that could be like outside of a coffee shop or a restaurant or something like that. So I'm gonna press Shift C again to center the 3D cursor. And then I'll press Shift A and let's start with a circle. And then again, right behind me, if you open up the add circle settings on the vertices here, I'm gonna change this to eight so that it is more low poly. So I'm gonna tab into edit mode and I'm gonna press F to fill a face. And then I'll press E and we're going to extrude that out a bit. So we're starting off by just making the bottom leg of the table. So I'll press E again to extrude that out. I'll press S now and we'll scale that down. I'll press E again to extrude that out and then S to scale that down again. And I'm gonna to continue to do that a few more times, scale that down a bit more. So that is a pretty good size, maybe just a little bit bigger. So I'll press E again to extrude out those vertices and we will bring this up. So that's gonna be like the bottom of the table. So we're now gonna create the top of the table right here. So I think I'll just bring this up a little bit farther and then I can press E to extrude. And then immediately after that, press S and we're going to scale that out. And I'm gonna make it pretty big because this is gonna be the top of the table and don't worry about that overlapping we're going to fix that when we extrude it out so just make that pretty big um, however however big you want the table to be and then I can press E and we're going to extrude that out and you can see now that we've extruded that up we're not having any of that flickering because it's not overlapping anymore so I'm now going to press I I is going to inset the face so we're going to have a face within a face and let's scale that down and I'm just going to bring that down to the very center and I now want to create kind of a cover over the top so I'm going to press E to extrude and we will extrude that up and I'm gonna bring it up pretty far and I'll place it probably about there. So I can now press E to extrude and then we'll press S 
We're going to scale that out. We'll make it a little bit bigger and place it right there. Let's also press one on the numpad to go to front view. And then I can press E again and then S again, and we will scale that up. But now we're going to have it go down. So I'll press G and Z and we will bring that down. So we're kind of creating a cover over this table. So I'll press E again. We're going to extrude that down S and we'll scale that up and then E again to extrude that and S again to scale that. And I want it to be pretty big so that then the chairs can be covered as well. So make that a bit bigger and bring it down. And then let's press E to extrude again and we'll just bring that down and scale it up a little bit. All right, that is pretty good. I do think I want this entire thing to be up a little bit more. So I'll press Z and move my mouse over and then let go to go into wireframe. And then I can press B for the box select. We're just gonna select all of this and I can press G and Z and we're going to bring the whole thing up. And I can also press S to scale that and then press Z to bring it out a little bit. So it's a little bit higher up and down. All right, that's good. So I'm gonna click right over here on the face select and then I can just select this face right here and I want to delete it. So I'll press X to delete and we want to delete the faces. Now I want to give this cover area some thickness because it doesn't actually have any thickness here. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key and I'm going to select this ring of faces and then hold down the Shift and Alt key and we're going to select all of these faces here and then Shift Alt select that as well. I'm now going to press Shift D. Shift D will duplicate this and then I'm just going to press S and we're going to scale that up a little bit. And I just want to scale it up slightly bigger and then I want to be able to also see this in wireframe. So I'll hold down the Z button, go over to wireframe and let go. And then I can press G to grab and bring it up on the Z axis and just make it flat. So make it flat along there. All right, so I just now need to fill these together and fill that together. So I'm first going to go up here and I'm going to go to the vertex select. I can just hold down the Alt key and select that ring of vertices and then I can press F to fill a face there. Let's navigate right down here. I'm going to hold down the Alt key and select that ring of vertices and then hold down the Shift and Alt key and select that ring of vertices. And then I want to bridge the edge loops. So this is really easy to do. You can just press Control E and that's going to bring up this edge setting and then just click on the third one, which is bridge edge loops and that's going to bridge those edge loops and then I need to select everything and I'm going to press shift n and that will recalculate the normals and then back in edit mode I do want to make the table here have a little bit more geometry on the sides so I'm going to press Control R and then I'm going to scroll my mouse wheel up to add two loop cuts and I'm going to left click and then right click so it hops it back to the center there and then I can press s to scale those loop cuts up and I'm just going to scale them out a little bit just so that that table is a bit more rounded there on the edge all right, that's good. Um, so I wanna make some chairs now, some chairs right here. So to do that, I'm actually going to duplicate this. So I'll press Shift D to duplicate this object in object mode. I'm gonna click with my mouse wheel and drag it over, and then I can tab into edit mode. So I actually wanna delete everything except the bottom here because I'm gonna use this bottom part here for the chair. So I'll hold down the Z key, go into wireframe and let go. And then using the box select with B, I can just drag a box around here. So drag a box around all of those vertices. And then you can press X to delete and just delete the vertices vertices. All right, so let's press A to select everything and I'll press period on the numpad to zoom over to it. And then I'll hold down the alt key and select that ring of vertices, hold down the shift and alt key and select that ring of vertices. And I can press S to scale and we're going to scale that up. And then I'll hold down the alt key, select that ring of vertices, scale that up a little bit and also hold down the alt key, select that ring of vertices and scale that up a little. So we can now extrude this up and then we'll create the chair right here. So I'll press E to extrude. We're going to bring it up on the Z axis and just bring it up about that high. And then let's also press one on the numpad to go to front view. So you can see that the entire chair is a bit too big because the chair needs to kind of be down here so that you can actually sit at the table. So I'm gonna tab into object mode and then I can just scale this entire object down a little bit. So scale it down kind of like that, and then we can go back into edit mode, and I'll just bring this up a little bit. All right, so that is gonna be the bottom of the chair, so we're now gonna make the seat of the chair and then the backrest. So back in edit mode, I'm gonna press Shift A, and let's go here and add a plane, and then I can press G to grab. We're gonna br bring this plane over on the X axis like that, and then I can press G and Z, and we will bring that plane up about there. And then I do want it to be just rounded a little bit. So I'll press control R. We're going to add a loop cut right there. So let's left click and then right click. And I can press G and Z and we are going to bring that up. And then also to give this a little bit more detail, let's press control B. Control B is going to add a bevel. And then you can also scroll your mouse wheel up if you want to add more cuts. I'm just going to add one cut in the middle there and I'll bring that out. 
go back into object mode, you can see that is good. So now I want to make this thicker and then I also want to bring out the back of the chair. And also this is a little bit too long back and forth. So I'm just gonna hover my mouse over the object and press L to select the entire thing. And then I can scale this. So let's press S to scale that. And then we'll scale it down on the Y axis and just make it a bit more thin like that. So I can now press E to extrude. We're gonna extrude up the bottom of that chair and we'll bring it up about that far. So I now need to add a loop cut in here so that I can extrude the back of the chair. So I'll press Control R to add a loop cut. We're gonna click and bring that over and place it right there. And then let's click right over here on the face select. And I also wanna select this front face right here and I'll bring it back a little bit and I'm also gonna bring it down a little bit. Okay, that is a bit better. So I'm now going to select this face right here. Let's press uh, one on the numpad to go to the side view and I'll press E to extrude. We're gonna extrude that up and I'll press G to grab. We're gonna bring it over and then I can press E to extrude and R to rotate and we'll press G to move that. And then I can press E to extrude again. And we're gonna kind of just rotate that over. And then you can see that this isn't really in the center. So what I'm gonna do is hover my mouse over this and press L and we'll select the entire thing. And then I can press G and we're gonna bring it over on the X axis and just stick that kind of in the middle there. So I can now just bring this chair over and just stick it at the table. And also I think I'll scale it up a little bit just so it's a bit bigger. And then I wanna duplicate this chair and put one chair over here. So I'll press Shift D to duplicate click with your mouse wheel to bring it over on the X axis. And then I wanna rotate this chair around so I can hit R to rotate. I'll rotate it on the Z axis and just rotate that over like that. All right, so let's press Control S again to save our project and we can now do the materials. So I'll press Z, move my mouse up to go into the rendered view. And I'm just gonna select this object here and I can click on it new. And I can just call this outdoor seating. And then let's go down here. Let me just make this a little bit bigger. So on the base color, I'm just gonna make this like a gray color so we'll make it pretty gray and then also I think I will turn the roughness up a little bit so it's not very reflective and maybe turn the base color down a little bit more all right so I now want to uh, add the outdoor seating to these objects as well so let's click and drag and drop the outdoor seating on these objects as well and maybe also make the base color slightly brighter so I now want to add some color to this cover up here so I'm going to tab into edit mode and then I can press one to go to front view I'll press Z move my mouse over and let go to go into wireframe and then using the box select I can just box select the top parts right there so all of that and then also I need to hold down the alt and shift key and select that ring of faces so let's click on the plus here and we can click on new to add a new material and I can just rename this material to cover because it's the cover of the table and then let's click on the assign button all right let's go into rendered mode just see how that's looking so I do want this to be white but I want the base color to be a little bit darker and then also turn the roughness up so it's a little bit less shiny. All right, so now I wanna add some orange colors as well. So I'll tab back into edit mode and I'm just gonna select some of these faces here. So I'll select this face and then I'm just gonna hold down the shift key and I'm just gonna shift and select all of these faces here. And then let's go over here, hold down the shift key and select all of these ones there. And then also I will do the inside. I think the inside would be cool as well. So I'm gonna hold down the shift key and select all of those. And then I can also hold down the shift and alt key and then select that ring of vertices. And then let's see right in here. I need to select all of those. So holding down the shift key, I'm gonna select those faces. Also these ones here, and then also these ones here. And then we're gonna go all the way around. So this is gonna go up and then it's gonna connect here. So we're basically gonna have these colored stripes on the cover. So just like that, that is what I wanna select. So I wanna select basically every other loop. So let's go right up here and we're gonna click on the plus to add a new material. I can click on new and I can just call this cover orange because I want this to be an orange color. So then make sure the cover orange is selected, make sure that's selected and click on the assign button to assign it. And then on the base color here, we can change that to a bright orange color, make it a little bit brighter, make it a little bit more orange. And then also down here, I will turn the roughness up so it's a little bit less shiny. All right, that's looking very nice. So I also wanna put that orange color down here on the legs of the table and chairs. So I'm just gonna hold down the shift key and select all of these objects. And then I can tab into edit mode and we can use the multi-object editing. So then using the box select, I'm just gonna select all the faces down here. So I'm just gonna press B for the box select and I'm just gonna select all of those faces. You can actually go into wireframe by pressing Z, moving your mouse over, and then just box select 
all of those faces there. All right, I'm going to go back into the rendered view. Okay, so now what we want to do right here is we want to click on the plus to add a new material in the slot. And then we're going to click on the drop down. And then let's go right down here and we're going to add the cover orange. If you can't find it because you have so many materials, you can start to search for it. We're going to add the cover orange and you can click on the assign button. Now it probably only assigned it to two objects and not the third one. That's because we're in the multi object editing. And so we actually have this object selected as our main object because it's selected yellow but then this one is selected orange now this one here i already had the cover orange in the material slot so it detected it but this chair here didn't have the orange cover in its material slot so just go into object mode and select one of the chairs and tab into edit mode and you can see we still have that part selected so i can just click on the plus here to add a new material in the slot and then the drop down i can add the cover orange and then you can just click on the assign button to assign that all right, there we go. That's looking very nice. So right down here in the collections, I can just rename this. So I can just rename this to outdoor seating. Okay, so that is called outdoor seating. I'm going to copy this. So I'll select it and press control C. And then on this chair, I can call this outdoor seat one. And then I can just select this chair. And in the outliner, I can rename this to outdoor seat two. So we have outdoor seat one, outdoor seat two, and then the outdoor seating. All right, let's press control S again to save, and then I can just move these out of the way and hide them so we can work on the next one. So I'm just gonna box select all these objects. I can press G to grab, just kind of move it over here, and then I can press H to hide that. So I'll press control S to save, and let's do the next object. So the next object that I'm gonna be creating is a garbage can. So I'll press Shift A, and let's go right down here, and again, we're going to add a circle. Now if you click on the add circle settings again, right behind me, on the vertices here, I'm gonna set this to 12, and that way it'll have just a little bit more detail. So I'll tab into edit mode, and then I'm gonna press F to fill a face there. Let's press one to go to the front view and I can now extrude this trash can up. So I'll press E to extrude. We're going to extrude this up and then I can press S and we're going to scale that out. And then I'll press E to extrude and then S to scale. We're going to scale that down a bit. You can also go into the wireframe view if you need to see that a little bit better. And it is a bit hard to see. Um, so what I'm going to do is go to the vertex select and now you can see those vertices. So I'll bring that down a little bit, not too far. And then I can press E to extrude and S to scale. And then I'll press E to extrude and S to scale, and we will scale that back out. So we're basically just creating a little indent in there that's going around the trash can. And then I can press E to extrude again and S to scale that out. See how that's looking? So that's pretty good. Um, so I want to make the trash can hollow inside. So I'll press I, that will inset that face, and I'll bring that face down. And then again, let's press one on the numpad to go to front view, and I can press Z, move over to wireframe and let go. So we're in the wireframe view. So I'll press E to extrude. We're gonna extrude this way down and bring it down to about there, and then I can scale it down with S and I'll scale that down to about there. So I want the thickness to generally be the same all around those edges. So the thickness there and right over there. All right, let's go back into solid view and that is looking very good. Okay, now I wanna add some details all around here. So what I'm gonna do is go to the face select and then holding down the alt key, I can select that ring of faces. So I'm gonna press the I key and that will inset the faces, but then I wanna hit the I key again. And that way it's going to inset the faces, but all the faces are going to be individual. And then I can just scale these down to something that I like, and they're all gonna be scaled individually. And then once you like that, just click to place that. So I can now press E to extrude, and then right after that, I'll press S to scale. And you can see that it's scaling it up as well as out, and I don't wanna do that, so I'm gonna press Shift Z. And that way it will not scale it up, but it'll just scale it out. And I actually wanna bring it in, so I'll bring all of them in a little bit, click to place that. All right, back in object mode, you can see we now have some nice details there on the trash can. So we're now gonna be creating the top of the trash can or the lid of the trash can. So let's go back into edit mode and I'm going to hold down the alt key. We're gonna select that ring of faces. Let's press shift D to duplicate. We're gonna bring it up on the Z axis just a little. And then I can press S and we're gonna scale that up a little bit. Um, and that way the trash can lid will be slightly bigger than the trash can. So I can press E to extrude. We are going to extrude 
screwed that up. So I'm now going to hold down the Alt key and just select that ring of faces. And I can press X to delete. And we just want to delete the faces. And let's also go right here to the vertex select. I'm going to hold down the Alt key and I'm just going to select that ring of faces there. So on the trash can, those bottom rings of faces. And I can press F and that will fill a face. So I can now hold down the Alt key and select the top inner ring of faces there on the trash can. And I'll press S to scale. And let's scale that way down. And then I can press G. We'll grab that and I'm going to bring it up on the Z axis. And then once you've brought that up, you can just press F and that will fill a face there. And then also I think that lid is a little bit thick. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key and select that ring of vertices. And then let's hold down the Shift and Alt key and select that ring of vertices. So to make it thinner, I can just press G to grab. We're going to bring it down on the Z axis and just bring it down there so it's a bit more thin. All right, so let's create a handle. So we're gonna create a handle on the top of the lid, and then also we'll create two handles on the sides of the trash can. So in edit mode, I'm gonna press Shift A, and we are going to add a cube. I can press G to grab. We're gonna bring this up on the Z axis, bring it up, and then I can press S, and we're gonna scale that down and then I can bring it down on the Z axis. Then I can scale it, so we're gonna scale it, and I'll scale it on the X axis and bring it down a bit, and then I can also scale it up on the Y axis so it's a bit longer. Now what I'm gonna do is go right over here to the face select, and I'm just gonna select this face, We'll go over here and then hold down the shift key and select this face. So I can press I and I will inset the faces and I'm gonna inset the faces down to about there. And then I can press X to delete and we just want to delete those faces. And then I just need to fill those two rings of vertices. So I'm going to go right here to the vertex select I can hold down the Alt key and select that ring of vertices, and then hold down the Shift and Alt key and select that ring of vertices. And then I want to use the bridge edge loops. So to use the bridge edge loops, I can press Control E. Control E is going to bring up these modeling settings, and I can click on bridge edge loops, and that is going to fill that. Now I do just want to make this a little bit more detailed, so I'm going to press Control R, and I'm going to scroll my mouse wheel out to add two loop cuts, and I can left click and then right click to put that in the center. And then I can press G to grab, and we're going to bring that up on the Z axis. And then let's bring the entire thing down. So with my mouse hovered over the object, I can press L and that'll select the linked vertices. And I can press G to grab and we can just bring this down so that the handle is a little bit less big. All right, that's good. So let's now create a handle over here and a handle over here. So I can just use the same handle. So I'll press Shift D to duplicate click with your mouse wheel to constrain it to the Y axis, and then I can bring it down. So G to grab, we'll bring this down on the Z axis like that. And then I can rotate this over, so let's rotate it on the Z axis. And then I wanna rotate it over exactly by 90 degrees. So to do that, just type in nine, zero, and enter. And then let's press three on the numpad to go to the side view, and I want to press R to rotate. We're gonna rotate this down, and then press G to grab, and we're gonna move that down. Just kinda of rotate it and move it down so that the hand handle is just like that. And then I want to duplicate this and bring it over to the other side. So something that I can do is I can press Shift C. Shift C will make sure the 3D cursor is in the very center there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right here and change the pivot point. So instead of the pivot point being on the median point, I'm going to change it to 3D cursor. So now what I can do is I can press Shift D. Shift D will duplicate this. Then I can press S to scale and we're going to scale it. Now it's going to scale it from the 3D cursor. And so I don't want to scale it down. I just want to scale it over on the Y axis. So I'm going to hit Y. Now I want to scale it over exactly over to the other side. So what I can do is I can actually just type in negative one and enter. And now that I've done that, you can see that it's brought it exactly over by negative one. So it's kind of mirrored that over. And then we need to recalculate the normals because it flipped this object inside out. So to recalculate the normals, just press shift N. That'll recalculate the normals. All right, back in object mode. There we go. We have a nice trash can. Let's do the material now. So I'm just going to select the trash can. We can click on new and I can just rename this to trash can. And then I do want this to be like a metal trash can. So to make this look metallic, we can turn this metallic value right here all the way up to one. Let's also go into rendered mode by just pressing Z, moving your mouse up and then letting go to go into the rendered view. And then I do want to make the base color a bit darker. So it's a bit darker like that. And then I think it could just be a little bit more shiny. So down here on the roughness value, I'm going to turn the roughness down a bit. So it's a little bit more shiny. And then it looks like I put the trash can handles on the wrong side. So I'll just press R to rotate. 
I'll rotate this over on the z-axis and I can type in 90 and enter to rotate that over by 90 degrees. And then I want to set this to the default rotation because I do want the y-axis to be going back and then the x-axis to be going on the side. So to make this the default rotation, I can just press control A and we want to apply the rotation. All right, so now that is now the default rotation. So I can just bring this over. Let's just bring it over to the side there on the x-axis. And then right here in the outliner, I can just rename this. So I'll just double click on it and I can just rename it to trash can like that. And then just to hide this object, I can press H and that will hide the object. So I'll just press control S again to save and we can do the next object. All right, the next object that we'll be creating is the gas fueling station. So to create that, I'll press shift A. We're gonna start by adding a cube. Let's tab into edit mode and I'm gonna scale this cube and let's scale it on the Y axis to make it a bit thinner. And we can also press G to grab and bring this up on the Z axis. And then let's also scale this on the X axis to make it a little bit longer. And then I want to delete half of it and add a mirror modifier um, so that we don't have to do as much modeling. So I'm gonna press control R and then just put one in here in the middle so I can just left click and right click so it hops back to the center and then let's hold down the shift key we're just going to select these four vertices and I can press X to delete and we'll delete the vertices so to add the mirror modifier you can click right over here on the modifier properties and then click on add modifier and let's add the mirror modifier and then also let's turn the clipping on and that way if I try to move this out of the way it's going to stay connected in the middle so I'm now going to click right over here on the face select and let's just select this face and I'll press press G and Z and we're gonna bring it up a little bit more and then I can press E to extrude that out and we're gonna bring it up even more. So now what I wanna do is go right here to the edge select and I'm gonna select this edge. I can press G to grab and let's bring it back on the Y axis and we'll bring that back a little bit so that this is slanted. And let's click right back over here on the face select and we're gonna select this face and I can press E to extrude and we're gonna just bring that up a little bit like that. Let's also select this face right here and I can press I to inset that, but then I wanna press B and that is going to toggle the boundary. So I wanna press B so that the boundary is turned off and I'll make that a bit smaller. Then I can press G to grab. We're gonna bring this in on the Y axis and make it a bit smaller. And then when we were modeling the last object, I turned the pivot point to 3D cursor, but I want to change it back to median point. So right here, just make sure this is set to median point. So I can now press S to scale and let's scale it up on the Z axis and make it a little bit bigger. And then I can press E to extrude and we'll just extrude that back there. All right, so I'm now just going to select this face and then hold down the shift key. We're going to select all of these faces on the side here. I'll press shift D to duplicate. Let's bring it over on the X axis like that. And then I can press S to scale and we want to thicken it up a bit. So I'm going to scale it just on the Y axis and we're going to make that a bit thicker. And then we need to add some thickness. So I'll press E to extrude and we're going to extrude that out. And also you could select this face and you could kind of bring that out so that the thickness is kind of the same and also maybe bring this face back a bit. All right, check the back, that's looking good. So I'm gonna click on this face right here and I can press G and Z and we're going to bring that up and make it pretty high, so about right there. All right, so I now wanna add a big top piece right here, so I'll press Shift D to duplicate. Let's bring this in on the X axis and I'm gonna push it into the mirror, so now it's connecting. And then I can press S to scale, we're gonna make it a bit thicker. And then I can press G to grab and we're gonna bring this on the X axis and bring it out a bit. And then I don't want this to be overlapping right here, so I'll press G and Z and we're just going to bring it down a little bit. So I can now give this some thickness and make it like a big cube. So I'll press E to extrude and we're going to extrude that whole thing up and put it right there. So I want to add some more details in here. So I'm going to press control R to add a loop cut. Let's add a loop cut going down. So I'm going to left click, bring it over and then click again to place that about there. And then let's also add a loop cut right here. So I'll press control R to add a loop cut, left click and then right click so it's right there in the center. So let's now click over here on the face select and I'm gonna select this face and I can press I to inset that face and I'll click to place it there. And then I can scale it on the Z axis and make it a bit smaller. And I can also bring it up on the Z axis. So I'll bring it up like that. And then I just wanna press E to extrude and we're going to extrude that back there. And let's also select this face right here. And I'm gonna press Shift D to duplicate this and I'll press S and scale it down. And I can also scale it on the X axis and then make it a little bit thinner. And then I can extrude that back there. Let's select this face right here and I'm going to press I to inset this face 
ways. And right here, this is going to be where you would stick that nozzle where you can fill up the car. So I'll press G to grab. We're going to bring this over on the X axis and then let's scale it as well. So I'll scale it on the X axis and make it a little bit thinner. And then I can also scale the whole thing down. So I'll press E to extrude and we're going to extrude that back there. All right. So now I want to press shift D to duplicate. We're going to bring this duplicated plane out and this is going to be the handle. And then I'll press E to extrude. We're going to extrude that back. So then hover your mouse over this object and press L. That'll select our cube. We're going to scale the whole thing down and then we can also scale it. So press S to scale. We can scale it on the X axis and make it a bit thinner. And then also I need to press shift N to recalculate the normals. So I want to kind of rotate this over so it looks like it's going inside this slot here. So I'll rotate it and I'm going to rotate it on the X axis and bring it in like that. And then I can also press three and that's going to go to the side view. I can press Z, hold down the Z button, move my mouse over to go into wireframe and I can press G to grab and I can just bring that in there. Maybe rotate it over a little bit more. All right, so that is looking good. Now let's go right over here on the side and I'm going to select this face right here. I'll press shift D to duplicate it and then I'll scale it down a bit. And then I'm also going to scale it on the Z axis and make that a bit smaller. And I can bring that up. So I'm now going to press E to extrude and I'm going to extrude that in. So we have a little detail there and then let's just duplicate this and move it down here. So you can just hover your mouse over the object and press L to select the linked vertices. And then to duplicate it, you can press shift D we're going to bring it down on the Z axis and just stick another one right there. And then we need to recalculate the normals. So I'm going to double tap the A key to select everything and I can press shift N to recalculate the normals. So let's now create some more details right here. So I'm going to select this face here and I'll press shift D to duplicate it. And I will also scale it down and then I can also scale it out on the X axis and I'll make it a bit longer and then scale that down and just put it right there. And I can also bring it a little bit closer. And then to give it some thickness, I'll press E to extrude. We just want to extrude that back there. And then I want to create one more in the middle. So I'm just going to select this face right here and I can press shift D. Let's click with our mouse wheel, constrain it to the X axis, bring it right there. And then I can just press E to extrude and we're going to extrude that out and just push it into the mirror. And then we have an extra face in there and I don't want that face. So I can just press X to delete and we're just going to delete the faces. And then let's select everything with the A key and I'll press shift N to recalculate the normals. And then let's also select this face right here and I'll press shift D to duplicate it and we can bring it out a little and then I can scale it down on the Z axis. Just make it a bit smaller, bring it in so it's pretty close and then just extrude that back. And then just hover your mouse over the object and press L to select the linked vertices. I'll just bring that down and then I can press shift D to duplicate. We'll bring it up on the Z axis and then I'll press shift D again to duplicate. We'll bring that up on the Z axis. All right. And then again, select everything with the A key and press shift N to recalculate the normals. So we've now done everything that I want to do with the mirror modifier. So we can just apply the mirror modifier and then keep on working on this. So I'm just going to click right over here on the mirror modifier, click on the arrow, and then you can click on the apply button and that'll apply it. So it's now geometry. So let's do the back here. So I'm just going to select some of these faces. I'll just select this one first. I'll press I and that will inset the face and then I can kind of bring it over there and then I can just extrude that back and then I'll do the same thing right here. So I'm going to press I to inset that face and then scale it down. I can also bring it over a little bit and then I can press E to extrude and I will extrude that back. And then I'm also going to select this face right here and I'll press shift D to duplicate this. I can scale it down a bit and also scale it down on the Z axis a bit. And then I want to put it pretty close to the back there and then I can press E to extrude and extrude that back. And then again, just select everything and I can press shift N to recalculate the normals. So I now want to add some more details right up here. So I'm first just going to select this face right here and I can press I to inset that face. I can bring it up on the Z axis. So I'll press G to grab, bring it up on the Z axis. And then I'll press E to extrude and we are going to extrude that back in there. And then let's also add some details up here. So I just want to add like a little box up here. So I'll press shift D to duplicate and then S to scale. We're going to scale this face down, kind of bring it over to the side and I can also scale it on the X axis to make it a little bit less long. I'm just going to bring it over there and then I can press E to extrude that down. And then again, I need to select everything and press shift N to recalculate the normals. And then let's also select this face right here and I'm going to press 
I and that will inset that. And then I want this to be pretty much a square. So I'm going to press S to scale that. Let's scale it down on the X axis like that. I can also press G to grab and we're going to bring it over on the X axis and I can scale it up a little bit. Then I'll press E to extrude and we're going to extrude that out. And then later on, we will be adding a little icon right here for the gas station. Let's also add another face right here. So I'm just going to select this face. I'll press Shift D to duplicate. Click with your mouse wheel to bring it over on the X axis. I want to scale this one down, so I'll scale this down on the Y axis. Just kind of bring it over here, and then I can just extrude this down by pressing E to extrude. And for some reason, I always have to recalculate the normals. It just seems like I always extrude the faces up on the wrong side, so I extrude it down this way instead of this way. Um, so just select everything and press Shift N to recalculate the normals. All right, so this is looking pretty cool. We're almost done with the modeling, um, but I do want to add some little buttons in here. So I'm just going to select one of these faces and I'll press shift D to duplicate. We'll scale the whole thing down and then I can also scale this on the X axis and bring that down there. So we're just going to create a few little buttons and things to work the gas station. So I'll press E to extrude. We'll extrude that back there and then I'll hover my mouse over this object and press L to select the linked vertices. And I'll press shift D to duplicate. We're just going to keep on duplicating this and add a few here. Also press shift D, click with my mouse wheel to bring it over on the X axis and we will just put a few right there. And then let's also duplicate this one again and bring this over. But this one, I'm gonna scale it on the X axis to make it a bit bigger. And then I can also scale it down a bit. So I'll press shift D to duplicate. I'll bring this over on the X axis and then I can press shift D again, bring it over on the X axis and then I'll press shift D again and we'll bring one more over. All right, so now we have some cool little buttons and things there. So I'll double tap the A key again to select everything and I'll press shift N to recalculate the normals. So let's go back into object mode now and I'm gonna be adding a curve to add the tube. So I'll press shift A and let's go right down here to a curve and I can just add the Bezier curve. So the Bezier curve is right here. So let's just bring it up here and then I can tab into edit mode and then it doesn't have any thickness right now so we need to give it some thickness so let's click right over here on the object data properties to give it some thickness so if you scroll right down here we want to open up the geometry tab and then we want to open up this bevel tab right here and then if you turn the depth up so just turn the depth up a little bit that is going to make it more thick so I'll tab into edit mode and that's going to go inside the edit mode of the curve and I can just select this handle right here so I'll press G to grab R to rotate and then G to grab and R to rotate. And I'm just gonna continue to do that and rotate it and grab it until it's right in there. So it's gonna just go right in there to that pump and then I'll select this and I'll bring this down and I'm also gonna rotate this over and I can also scale this down a bit if I wanna scale down the handle. And then to make this a bit longer, I can press E to extrude that. So I'm gonna extrude up the handle, rotate it over. So if you press E to extrude, that is going to make this curve longer. So I can rotate that over, so it's going down and then over. And then I'll select this handle and I can press E to extrude. And we wanna bring this handle pretty far up kind of over like that, maybe bring it over a little bit farther. Let's maybe select this and bring it back a little bit. And then I can select this one again, I'll press E to extrude, and we're going to extrude this all the way up and we're gonna stick it into the top there. And I can also just rotate that over. All right, that's looking very good. So I'll tap back into object mode and I want this tube to be over on the other one as well. So we can just add a mirror modifier to do that. So click over on the modifier properties. And then if you click on add modifier, let's go right down here and we're gonna add the mirror modifier. Now, right now it's mirroring it in the middle middle of the object's origin and this is the object's origin right here and so what we can do is we can actually use this mirror object to tell it to mirror from the center of this object instead of its own center so on the mirror object you're going to click on this button right here on the eyedropper and then just select this object right here and that way now it's going to mirror that over from the center of that object. All right, press Control S again to save our project and the modeling is done so we can now do the materials. So let's click right over here on the material properties and I'm just gonna select the main object. So I'm gonna click on new and I can just call this fuel metal. So fuel metal and then to make it metallic, I'm gonna go right down here and turn the metallic value up. So I'm gonna turn the metallic value all the way to one and then also I'll press Z and move my mouse up and let go to go into the rendered view so we can see how that's looking. So on the base color here, I'm gonna turn the base color down a bit so it's 
it's a bit more shiny. And let's also turn the roughness value down so it's even more shiny. Now I want to make another metal material and this other metal material is going to be a bit darker. So I'm going to click on the plus right here to add a new material and I want to add the same fuel material. So I'm going to click right over here and this is going to go to all of our materials and I can just start to search for the fuel material. So I'm going to add in the same exact fuel material. So we now have two fuel materials, um, but then I want to duplicate this. So I'm going to click right over here on this file icon. That's going to duplicate the material, but it's going to keep the same data. So I can just rename this to fuel material dark. So let's go into edit mode and we can now just select some faces and then we can make the faces the fuel metal dark. So I'm going to hover my mouse over these objects and press L and press L and L to select those. Also right here, I'm going to hover my mouse over those objects. And then I'm also going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to shift select all of these objects. And then also I want to select the inner faces right there. So I'm going to hold down the shift and alt key and then select that ring of faces. And then I'm also going to hover my mouse over these objects and press L to make those the dark metal. We also want to do these big beams here. So press L and L to select those ones. Um, that is pretty good. And let's also shift select this one right here. And then again, we want to hold down the shift and alt key and select that ring of vertices there to select the inner faces. And then also press L and L to select those ones. All right, so that's good for now. So let's click on the fuel metal dark, make sure that is selected and then click on the assign button. So let's go into object mode and we'll go into the rendered view. And then let's take the base color and we're gonna turn the base color down. So that's good. And now you can see we have two different colors of metal. So let's tab in edit mode again, and I'm going to press A to deselect everything. And I'm just going to select some of these faces back here. So first I'll press L to select that, and then I'll hold down the shift key. We're going to select those. And then also again, hold down the shift and alt key, select that ring of faces and select that ring of faces, and then click on the fuel metal dark, and you can click on the assign button. Let's also do the same thing for this. So I'm gonna hold down the shift key and then hold down the shift and alt key. We'll select all of those. So select all those ones and then we can click on the fuel metal dark and assign that. Let's go back into object mode and I'm gonna select the tubes here. I'm gonna click on new and I can just call this tube. And then for this material, I'm gonna take the base color and I'm gonna make it fully black. And then I want this to be shiny. So right down here on the roughness, I'm gonna turn the roughness down so it's pretty shiny. So we can select the main object again and go into edit mode. And then I wanna add some color to these buttons. So I wanna make some of the buttons yellow and some of the buttons red. So let's go right up here. I'm gonna click on the plus right here. We can click on new to add a new material. I can just call this button red. So now that we've added that button red material, let's take the base color and we're going to make it a bright red color. And I just need to assign some of these buttons to that color. So I'm going to hover my mouse over the objects and press L um, and just select some of these here. So I'll select those ones. And then I'm going to click on the button red, make sure that is selected and click on assign. And then we want to do the same thing, but make some yellow ones. So I'm going to hover my mouse over these objects and press L to select the remaining objects. And then let's click on the plus here to add a new material. I can click on new. And then for this material, I can rename it to button yellow. All right, and then right down here on the base color, I can make this a bright yellow color and then click on the assign button. So now we're gonna be adding in that gas station texture. We're gonna be adding it on this object. So I'll tab in edit mode, hold down the alt key and we're gonna select that ring of faces and then just hold down the shift key and select that face. So I'm gonna click on the plus here. Let's click on new and I can just just call this a uh, fuel icon fuel icon and then with that selected and with the fuel icon selected you can click on the assign button all right and then on the base color we're going to start by just making this like a bright blue color all right so to add in the texture we're going to need to go over to the shading tab all right so here is the fuel icons shader nodes so to add in that texture i'm going to press shift a we're going to search for the image texture node and then we can click on open to open up that image texture so here is the free fuel icon from Pixabay. I talked about this at the beginning of the tutorial series. So if you'd like to download it, it's a free image from Pixabay and the link will be in the description. So I'm just gonna select it and then click on open image. Now I want to press shift A and I'm gonna search for a mix RGB and I'll drop that
that down here because I still want this to look blue, but then I just want to add the icon on top of it. So let's actually take the alpha of this texture and we're going to put the alpha into the factor. And then we're going to take the color and we're going to put that into the base color. Now we need to UV unwrap this. So I'm just going to select this front face right here and I can press U and then we're just going to click on unwrap. So we've UV unwrapped it, but we're still not really able to see it. And that's because we need to change these colors. So I'm actually going to click right here and unplug the wire because I'm going to take this base color and I'm going to click and drag and drop the base color on this first color here. And then this color here, color two, I'm going to make that fully black. So I can now plug this color back into the base color. And you can see that now we're able to see that texture because we're using this alpha as the factor. So we're telling it where it's going to be color one and where it's going to be color two. So that's looking pretty good, but I do need to play around with the UV editing because the UV editing is a bit messed up. So let's click right over here on the UV editing tab. And then you can see that it's already added in the gas image. If for some reason it didn't add in that icon, you can click right here and just search for that icon. All right, so just select this face. And then right here in the UV editor, I'm gonna press A to select everything. And I can press S to scale that out and G to grab and just move it into the center. Now you can see that it's tiling the texture on the edges, um, but I will show you a easy way to fix that. So I wanna rotate this over. So I'll press R to rotate and then I can type in nine and zero. And then you can see that it's rotated it over by 90 degrees, but it's now upside down. So after I type in nine and zero, I can just type in negative and then enter. And that way it'll make it negative 90 instead of 90 degrees. So I'm gonna go right back over here now to the shading tab. And then I wanna make this so that it doesn't tile the texture. So right here on this gas texture, I'm gonna click right here on the repeat and I'm gonna instead change it from clip. So it's not gonna be repeating, it's just going to clip that. And then also right here, if I go to the side, you can see that is black. So I'm gonna hold down the Alt key and just select that ring of faces. And then I can press U and we just want to unwrap those faces. Now I don't want those faces to look black at all. I just want them to look blue. So we're gonna go over to the UV editing and you can see here are all those faces. I'm going to press A and that's going to select all the faces and then I can just press S and we're going to scale them down and I just want to bring them over so just, just press G to grab and I want to stick them inside the transparent area of the texture and that way you can see that now it's blue. So that's good. Let's go back over to the shading tab. Now there is a few more things I want to do. One thing that I want to do is turn the roughness down so it's more shiny. So if I now kind of look over there, you can see it's a bit reflective. And then another thing you can do is you can make it look slightly bumpy. So I can take this alpha here and I can plug the alpha into the normal. Now we need to convert this to normal data because this is black and white data, but this is normal data. So to convert that, I'll press shift A and we will search for a bump node. And we're going to click on the bump node and I want to drop the bump node in between the alpha and the normal. And then I want the alpha to be going into the height instead so it, it'll convert it to normal data. So now if you zoom in here, you can see it just looks like there's a tiny little bump there on the side. And I do think that looks nice. It just makes it look a little bit more 3D. So I think that looks pretty nice. So you could do that if you'd like to. Let's go back over here to the layout and I'll press control S again to save. So that is it. So this asset is now done. So I'm just going to click and drag and open up the outliner. And then if I click right here, I can just call this fuel. So I'm just going to rename this to fuel. And then right here on this Bezier curve, if you select the Bezier curve, I can rename this Bezier curve to fuel tubes. So fuel tubes. So we now have the fuel and the fuel tubes. So I'm just going to hold down the shift key and just select both of these objects. And I can just move them over on the X axis just to get it out of the way. And then I'll press H again to hide that. So I'll press control S to save and let's do the next asset. All right, so the next asset that we'll be creating is the bus stop. So I'm gonna press shift C to center the 3D cursor and then I'll press shift A and we're gonna start with a cube. So I'm gonna tab into edit mode and then I'll press S and we're gonna scale that cube down. And then I can also press G to grab. And we're gonna just bring it over here, kind of bring it over there. And also I'll bring it down a little bit so it's more flat with the grid. So I now wanna add a mirror modifier so we can mirror it over this way and then also mirrored over this way because the bus stop is pretty similar on all the sides. So I'm going to click on the modifier properties and let's click on add modifier and we're going to add the mirror modifier. So we're going to mirror it over on the X axis. So you can see it's mirrored over this way, but then I also want to mirror it over on the Y axis. So now it's mirroring it over four times. So I'm now just going to select this face right here and I'm going to press E to extrude. We're going to extrude this out, but then I actually need to turn on the clipping here and that way I can press G to grab, 
bring it in and I can push it into the mirror and it's going to merge together. And then we don't need this extra face right inside there. So I'll press X to delete and we want to delete the faces. So I'm going to do the same thing right over here. So I'm going to select this right here and I'm going to press E to extrude and we're going to extrude that out and just push it together. And then again, I can press X to delete and we want to delete the faces. And then once we finish modeling the bus stop, we can apply the mirror modifier and we'll delete this right here um, because we do need the front of the bus stop open so people can walk into it. So I'm going to select everything with the A key and I want to press G to grab and we're going to bring it up on the Z axis just a little bring it up like that. And then I can select this bottom face right there and I'll press E to extrude and we're going to extrude that down just because I want to have some kind of like some legs there for the bus stop. And then right here, this is going to be a metal beam and then there's going to be like some glass windows. So I'm going to select this face right here and I'm going to press E to extrude and let's extrude this up as well. Bring it up pretty far, a little bit farther. And now you can start to see the general shape of the bus stop. So if you want to press A to select everything, you can press G to grab and you could make the bus stop a little bit wider or a little bit thinner, whatever you want to do. So I'm now going to select this again, and I'm going to press E to extrude. We're just going to extrude this up a little bit so that this is about the size of a cube. And then I can press E to extrude. We're going to push that together, bring it all the way in, and then I can press X to delete, and we want to delete the faces in there. And then I'm going to select this right here. We'll press E to extrude, and again, we're going to push these together, and then we need to delete that face in there. So press X to delete, and we're going to delete the faces. So now you can kind of see the shape of that. So now let's create the top of the bus stop. So I'm going to press shift A and we're going to add a plane in edit mode in the same edit mode. I'll press G to grab and I'm going to bring this out and you can see when I bring it out it's going to connect with the mirror modifier. So now we have this much bigger piece. So I can press G to grab. Let's bring it up on the Z axis, bring it to about there. And then I can also press G to grab and we're going to bring it out a little bit and I'll bring it down a little. So I want to have the top kind of rotating over. So I'm going to press control R to add a loop cut. I'll click and then bring that over there. And then I'll press control R and we can add another loop cut right there. So I'm now going to click right up here to go to the face select and I can just select this face and I'll press G to grab and let's bring it up on the Z axis a little. Then I can select this face and press G to grab. We're going to bring it up a little on the Z axis. And then let's click right back over here to go to the vertex select and I'm going to select this vertex, shift select this vertex and I can press G to grab and we'll bring it up on the Z axis a little. Also, you could shift and select both of these vertices and press G and Z and bring it down. So we basically just have a curve right there. So I'm now going to press L to select all of the linked vertices and I want to press press E to extrude. We're just going to extrude these down like that. And then it looks like I need to recalculate the normals. So double tap the A key and I can press shift N to recalculate the normals. And then I'm also going to hover my mouse over this object and press L to select the linked vertices. And I want to press G to grab and I want to bring them in a little bit and bring it back a little bit just because I don't want it to be quite that big. So we now have the top there for the bus stop. And then I want to add some metal beams going up into the top. So I'm going to press control R to add a loop cut. Let's bring the loop cut over there and then control R and we'll we're going to add another loop cut right there. And then I want to do the same thing over here. So control R, we'll add another loop cut right there and control R click and add another loop cut right there. All right. So we now have some faces there. Um, and then I do also want to add another one here. So let's press control R, add a loop cut right there and then control R click and add a loop cut right there. So now what I can do is I can go right over here to the face select and I'm going to select this face and then I'm going to hold down the shift key and just hold down the shift key and select these other faces. So now that I have all those faces selected, I can press E to extrude. We're going to extrude them all up. And you also might need to press uh, one on the numpad or actually three on the numpad to go to side view so that you can see that in the side view. And then I want to see this in wireframe. So I'm going to press Z, move my mouse over and let go to go into wireframe. And I want to bring those up so that they are just going in there. So then I want to deselect these because I want to bring these up as well. So I'm going to press B for the box select. And then I'm going to click and hold with my mouse wheel and just make a box around that and then let go to deselect that. So I can now press G to grab let's bring it up on the z-axis and just stick it right in there. All right, that's good. Let's go back into object mode and back into solid view. And that's looking very nice. All right, so that is pretty good. So I'm now just going to apply the mirror modifier. So I'm going to click on the mirror modifier right here. Make sure it's selected with the blue outline and then you can press control A to apply that. And let's press control S to save. So now go back into edit mode and I just want to delete this metal beam right here because I only want the metal beam to be in the back. So I'm going to hold down the alt key and select that ring of faces going around there. I can press X to delete and I want to delete the faces. And then also hold down the alt key and select that ring of faces and we can press X to delete and delete the faces. And then we need to fill a face there. So you can click on the vertex select and then just hold down the shift key, select those 
vertices and then you can press F to fill that. Let's navigate right over here and we want to do the same thing. So select this vertex, hold down the shift key and select all these vertices. And then I can press F to fill that. All right, that's good. And this is starting to look kind of like a bus stop. So I'll tab back into edit mode now, and I want to create two beams that are going down here. So what I can actually do is go to the face select, and I'm just going to select this face right there. I'll press shift D to duplicate, and I'm going to bring this face over a little bit, and then I'll also scale it down just a little. Then I can press G to grab, and we're going to bring it up on the Z axis, and I'm going to stick it inside that piece right there. So I can now press E to extrude, and we are going to extrude that down and just stick it right there. And then I do want another one to be over on the other side but we already applied the mirror modifier so what I can do is just deselect everything hover your mouse over this object and press L to select the linked vertices and then I'll press one on the numpad to go to the front view and I'm also going to press G to grab click with my mouse wheel to bring it over on the x-axis and I'll stick it right about there so it's in the middle of these two beams so I'll now press shift D to duplicate click and hold with your mouse wheel and let go to constrain it to the x-axis and just stick it right about there. I don't really mind if it's not exact, just pretty close. And that is looking very good. So I now want to create those windows in the bus stop. So in object mode, I'll just press shift C to center the 3D cursor and I'll press shift A and I'm going to add a plane. I'll tab into edit mode without moving the plane, just tab into edit mode. And then once you're in edit mode, you can press G to grab and you can move this. And I also want to press R to rotate and let's rotate it on the Y axis. And then I'll type in nine and zero and enter to rotate it over exactly by 90 degrees. And then I can also scale this up and I'll also bring it over. So I'm going to scale it up and I'm just going to stick it right in here so that it is fitting inside those metal beams. So like that, I can also scale it on the Z axis and make it a bit longer and and then press G to grab, bring it up on the Z axis like that. I need to also scale it down and bring it up a little bit. All right, now I need to give it some thickness because it doesn't have any thickness right now and I do want the glass to be a little bit thick. So over here on the modifier properties, I can click on add modifier and I'm gonna go right down here under generate and I'm gonna add the solidify. So the solidify is just gonna give this object a little bit of thickness and you can play around with this thickness value. You can make it more thick or less thick. Um, something like that is pretty good. I think I'll just turn the thickness up just a little. Um, so that's looking pretty good. So I can now take this plane and I'll press shift D to do Duplicate. Let's bring it over on the Y axis. And you can see if I go into object mode and zoom in here, you can see there's the thickness. So I might just want to turn the thickness up just a tiny bit if I want to make that glass a little bit thicker. All right, back in edit mode, I'm just going to rotate this plane. So I'll press R to rotate. Let's rotate it on the Z axis and I can type in a nine and zero and enter to rotate it over by 90 degrees. And let's just bring it over here and kind of stick it inside this window there. So bring it over. I can also bring it up on the Z axis like that. And then I need to scale it. So I'm going to scale it on the X axis. So you can press S to scale and then X to bring it over on the X axis and just scale it up and just fit it inside that place right there. So it fits in the window. All right. Just like that. That is looking really good. And then I want to select this face right here and I want to put that over there. So I'll press shift D to duplicate. I want to bring it over on the X axis and just stick it inside those beams right there. All right, go back into object mode and that is looking very nice. So I want to now add a bench inside the bus stop. So I'll press shift A in object mode. We're going to add a new object and I'm going to add a cube and then I will tab into edit mode. And that way, when I press G to grab, you can see the origin point is going to stay in the center because we're in edit mode and I'm going to bring this over on the X axis. So let's now click on add modifier and I'm going to go right down here and add a mirror modifier so that we can mirror the bench over. And then I also want to select this face right here. I'll press G to grab. We're going to bring this over on the X axis and push that in. But then I also need to turn on the clipping here so that it merges it. So I can now press G to grab, bring it back on the X axis and push it into the mirror. And then we also have that face in there that we don't need that extra face. So you can press X to delete and we want to delete the faces. And then let's also click on this face. I'll press G to grab and we're going to bring it in and we're going to bring it up so it's much smaller. OK, like that. And then I'll select this face. Let's bring it out and make it a bit longer. So for this bench, I'm going to create some wood planks and then we'll also create some metal legs. So I'm going to select this face right here and I'll press G to grab. We'll bring it over on the Y axis and just bring it right there. And then just press the A key a couple of times to select everything. And I want to duplicate this over. So I'll press shift D to duplicate, bring it over on the Y axis and stick it right there. And then shift D to duplicate, bring it over on the Y axis and stick it right there. And then if you need to, you can select everything and you can kind of scale the whole thing down 
and bring that over. Let's tab back into object mode and then I can press G to grab. We'll bring it back on the Y axis and just bring it back there. All right, tab in edit mode again and I'll press G to grab. We're gonna bring it up on the Z axis and just make that a little bit higher. All right, that is good. So you can see we now have those wooden planks there. Um, so I now just wanna create some metal legs. So I'm gonna tab back into edit mode and I'm just going to select this face right here. So I wanna just turn off the clipping. So I'll turn off the clipping temporarily and that way I can press shift D to duplicate and I can bring this plane out and it's gonna separate from the mirror and then I can just turn back on the clipping. So I'll press S to scale and let's scale this down on the X axis, make it much smaller, and then I can scale it up. And then let's also scale it on the Y axis to make it a bit longer. And then I can just bring it over and we're gonna stick it right up here. So on the very side of that bench there, just stick it up like that. Then I can press E to extrude. We're gonna extrude that whole thing down. And then I can press E to extrude, bring that down even more. And then I can press S to scale. Let's scale it on the Y axis and make it much smaller so that is about a square maybe bring it out a little bit so i can now press e to extrude again and we're just going to bring that down we can also press one on the numpad to go to front view and i just want to bring it down so it's about the same as the leg right there so like that that's pretty good and then in object mode you could also scale the whole thing up a little bit if it's looking a bit too small all right that is good um, we are almost done with the modeling but i do want to add a little bus stop sign and then after we create that we'll do the materials so in object mode i'm going to press shift a to add a new object and for the bus stop sign i'm going to go right down here and add a cylinder and then right over here on the cylinder settings if you want to make it look a bit more low poly you could turn the vertice count down i'm just going going to leave it at 32 because I do want the bus stop sign to be kind of circular. So I'll just leave it set to 32 on the add cylinder settings and then I can close this. So I'll press G to grab and we're going to bring the bus sign over. Let's bring it over kind of over here. Just bring it out like that. And then I'll tab into edit mode and I want to scale the whole thing down on the Z axis to make the sign much smaller. So I'll press G to grab. We're going to bring it up on the Z axis and I'll make it about that high. Also scale it up a little bit and then I can rotate it. Let's rotate it on the X axis, actually the Y axis. Axis, and I want to rotate it over exactly by 90 degrees so you can type in 9 0 and enter to rotate that over and then if you go right down here I want to actually make a pull for the sign so I'm gonna select this bottom face right there and then hold on the shift key and select the other bottom face actually that's the wrong one I need to select this one and then that one um, I can press 3 on the numpad to go to side view just to make sure those are the two uh, bottom ones so I can now press E to extrude and we're gonna extrude this way down and again you can press 1 to go to front view and just bring it down and make Make sure it's about the same as all of these and then i want to make that perfectly flat so i'll press s to scale let's scale it on the z-axis and i can type in zero and enter to make that totally flat all right so there's our bus sign so we can now start with the materials um, so let's just do the materials for the bus sign first so i'll hold down the z key move my mouse up and let go that's going to go into the rendered view and then right over here on the material properties let's click on new and i can just call this bus sign now i'm going to be adding in a texture and i talked about the texture at the beginning of the tutorial series so it's a free bus sign icon from pixabay so to add it in let's go over here to the shading tab so I'll press shift a now in blenders shader nodes and I'm going to search for an image texture All right, let's drop the image texture right there And then I can click on open to open up the texture and then here is the bus sign texture from pixabay So it's a free image and I'll have the link in the video description if you'd like to download it So if you download it, you can just click on that and then click on open image and that'll open it up and then I want to take the color and I want to put that into the base color of the principle. So we need to UV unwrap this. So I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm just going to select everything. And I'm going to press three on the numpad to go to side view and I'll just zoom in here. So I can press U to unwrap and I'm going to actually unwrap project from a view. And that way it's going to unwrap the object from our view. Now we need to play around with the UV editing. So let's go right over here to the UV editing tab. And I'm going to zoom out here. Let's zoom over to the bus sign. So what I'm going to do is select this face and then I'm going to hold down the shift key and select this face because right now I just want to move these faces around. So in Blender's UV editing, I'll press A to select everything and it should already add in the bus sign texture in the background. If it doesn't, you can open it up and just find the bus sign texture right here. So I'll press S to scale. Let's scale the whole thing up and then I can press G to grab and we're just going to move this over and just fit it right there. 
So now I want to select everything else. So I'm going to press control I. Control I is going to invert the selection. So we now have everything else selected. And then right over here in the UV editor, I'm going to press A to select everything. I'll press S and we're going to scale everything down and I'll make everything really small. And I'll press G to grab and just stick it in the blue there. So there we go. We now have a blue bus sign. Um, and then let's go right over here to the materials. And I do want to create one more material. I want to create a metal material for the bus sign pole. So I'll tab into edit mode and then holding down the alt key, I'm going to select that loop of faces right there. Let's click on the plus here to add a new material within this object's material slot. And then I can click on a new and then I can just rename this material here, this second material to bus sign pole. All right, so just make sure the bus sign pull is selected and you can click on the assign button to assign that. And then to make it look like metal, I'm going to take the base color and make that a little bit darker. And then I'm also going to turn the roughness way down so it's a bit more shiny. And then to make it look very metallic, I'm going to turn the metallic value all the way to one. And then now that it's metallic, it's a little bit dark. So I think I'll just turn the base color up a little bit. All right, so that is looking very good. So let's do the other materials now. So I can go back over to the shading tab to do the other materials. Let's just make this a bit smaller. And actually, I don't even need to be in the shader editor because we don't really need to use the shader nodes. So I can just go back over here to the layout. All right, so I'm going to select the main object here. Let's click on new and I can just call this bus stop. All right, bus stop um, on the base color here. I'm going to make this a bit darker, so I'll make it pretty dark. And then I'm also going to turn the roughness down. So on this roughness value, just turn that down. So it's a bit more shiny and you could even turn the base color down a little bit more. So let's now click on this object right here and I'm going to click on the drop down and I'm going to start to search for the bus stop and I'm just going to add the bus stop. Now I want to make this part right here look like wood. So I'm going to tab into edit mode and I'm going to hover my mouse over this object and press L and L and L just to select those planks of wood. So I'm now going to click on the plus right here and then let's click on the new button and I can just call this bus stop bench. And then what I can do is go down here to the base color and to make it look like a wood material on the base color, I could just make this kind of an orangey color and then make it a bit darker. So it's a brown color and then make sure the bus stop bench is selected and then click on the assign button and that'll assign it. And then I'm also going to take the base color and make it a bit darker. And then I will also turn the roughness value up so it's not going to be quite as reflective. And let's maybe make this a little bit darker. You could also turn the specular down if you want to be less reflective. So it's not going to reflect as much of the light. All right, so we are almost done, um, but I do want to add a material here for the glass. Now I want to be able to see through this glass. And so I'm going to be using my Blender EV glass shader. So if you haven't watched that tutorial on my Blender EV glass shader, I'll have a link in the video description and a card right up there on the screen. So you can go ahead and watch that tutorial to learn how to create the EV glass shader. Um, and I do also have a free download on my Gumroad store and my Patreon. So I'll have the links in the video description if you'd like to download the free EV glass shader if you don't want to do the tutorial. Tutorial. So if you've downloaded the EV glass shader or created it yourself, I'm now going to add the EV glass shader into this blender file. So to do that, I'm going to click on file and then I can click on the append button. And then here's the tutorial files for my realistic EV glass shader. So I'm going to open this up and then I'm going to go to material. And then I just want to go right here and select the EV glass shader. So now that we've added that, I'm going to click on this object right here and let's click on the drop down and I can start to search for EV glass shader and I can just add that to make it look a little bit more realistic though I'm gonna go right over here to the output properties actually right up here to the render properties and then I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna open up the screen space reflections and then if you open this up you can click on the refraction and if you click on the refraction that is going to help just a little bit to make it look a bit more realistic let's close the screen space reflections and I can go back over to the material properties all right so we now have this nice glass shader and it will allow you to see through the glass and that is it for the bus stop so I'm just going to make this a bit bigger so I can see in the outliner. I'm just going to select this object and I can just call this bus stop. So I'll rename that to bus stop. Let's also click on the glass and I can click right here and I can rename this to bus stop glass. And let's also click on the sign right here. I can just double click on this to rename this and I can just call this bus stop sign. And then one more, I want to click on this object right here and then I can double click on this to rename it and I can just call it bus stop bench.
match. So there we go, we now have these four objects. So I'm just going to press B for the box select and I'm just gonna select all these objects and I can just press G to grab. Let's bring it over on the X axis and I'm just gonna move this out of the way so that we can model more objects and then I'll press H to hide all those objects. Let's press Control S again to save and let's do the next objects. All right, so we have three assets left. So the three last assets that we're gonna be creating is three different types of roads. So we're gonna be creating a straight road, a 90 degree curve, road and then also an intersection. So let's get started. We're first going to be creating the intersection. So I'm going to press shift C again to center the 3D cursor and then I'll press shift A and I'm going to go right here and just add a plane. And then I don't want to scale the plane or anything. I'm just going to leave it exactly how it is and I will tab into edit mode. So I'm now going to press control R and I want to scroll my mouse wheel out until there are five loops. So you can see there's two on this side, one in the middle, and then two on that side. So I can now left click and then right click to center that. And then over here, I wanna press Control R and I'm going to scroll my mouse wheel out until there are five and then left click and left, right click. You could also just like subdivide this um, using the subdivide option. I'm just gonna add loop cuts. So I now want to delete this side and this side over here because we can just model one quarter of it and then we can mirror it over. So I'm just going to press B for the box select. I'm gonna box select all of these faces. And also I need to go into the the face select mode and then yeah press B for the box select just box select all of these faces so now we have 75% of it selected so there's just this quarter over here that's not selected so I'm gonna press X to delete and I want to delete the faces so then right over here on the modifier properties let's click on add modifier and we're going to add a mirror modifier so right under generate we're gonna go right down here and add the mirror modifier now I want to mirror it over on the X axis but I also want to mirror it over on the Y axis so click on X and Y and then I want to turn the clipping on so that it merges in the very center of the mirror. So now what I want to do is create the sidewalk, but I first want to delete this face. So we're going to click on this face, press X to delete, and we're going to delete the faces. So now that we've deleted that face right there, I also want to add some loop cuts in here. So I'll press Control R to add a loop cut left click and right click and then control R to add a loop cut this way and then left click and then right click to place the loop cut. So this is going to be the sidewalk. So I'm gonna click right over here on the face select and I'm gonna hold down the shift key and select all of these faces. That is going to be the sidewalk. So I'm now gonna press E to extrude, E to extrude and we are going to bring that up a little bit. Now if you zoom in here to the sidewalk, I want this curb of the sidewalk to be rotated over a little bit. You could keep it square if you want to, but I do like it if it's a little bit rotated. So what I'm gonna do is go right here to the edge select and then I'm just gonna select this edge right here. I'm now gonna press control B and control B is going to add a bevel and then I can scroll my mouse wheel out and I'm just gonna add two cuts and I'm just gonna bevel that out to about there and click to place that. So now if we go back into object mode, you can see that is just a little bit smooth. And then I'm also gonna wanna add those dotted lines there in the street. So I'm gonna press control R to add a loop cut drag over and add a loop cut right there. Press Control R to add another loop cut and drag it over there. And we can adjust the size of this later. Once we add the dotted lines, if we want to be a bit thicker or thinner, we can uh, adjust those lines. All right, so let's tab back into object mode and we'll just do some materials. So I'll press Z, move my mouse up to go into the rendered view. And then I'm gonna go right here to the material properties. I can click on new and I'm gonna call this street. So I'm gonna call this one street. And then for this material, I'm gonna take the base color and I'm gonna make that a dark color. And then I'm also gonna turn the roughness up because I don't want it to be very shiny. Um, let's also turn the base color down a bit more. So I now wanna create a separate material for the sidewalk. So I'm gonna tab into edit mode and zoom in here. So I'm gonna to go to the face select by clicking right here and then holding down the alt key, I can select that ring of faces. All right, so I'm gonna hold down the shift key and just select these other pieces there. So we now have all those pieces of the sidewalk selected. So now right up here in the material slots, I'm gonna click on the plus here. Let's click on it new to add a new material. I can just call this sidewalk, so sidewalk, and then just click on the assign button and that'll assign it. All right, so we now just need to make a material for this. So on the base color, I'm gonna make a gray color, but it's gonna be quite a bit brighter than the street. So I'll make it a bit brighter like that. And then also it is gonna be kind of rough. So let's turn the roughness up. And also let's click on the street right here. I'm gonna take the base color and just make that a little bit darker. So now we need to create those white stripes in the middle of the street. So let's go back into edit mode and I'm going to select this face right here and then hold down the shift key, select that face right there. So I can now click on the plus here. Let's click on new and I can just call this stripe. And I can just call this white stripe. 
stripes. All right, white stripes, and then just click on the assign button. And I'm gonna leave it white, although I think I will just make it a tiny bit darker so it's not quite that bright. And then this also is on concrete, so concrete isn't very shiny. So I'll turn this roughness value up like that. So that is looking pretty good, but on the intersection, I do wanna create a crosswalk. So I'm gonna tab in edit mode, and I'm just gonna select this face right here. I'm gonna press Shift D to duplicate it, and then I'll scale it down just a little. And then I'm also gonna scale it on the X axis and make it quite a bit smaller. Let's also press seven on the numpad to go to top view. I can press G to grab, bring this over, and S to scale, we'll scale it down a little bit. All right, and then click on the white stripes, and then I'm gonna click on the assign button. And also zoom in here, and I wanna press G to grab, and I wanna bring it down the Z axis and just make it so it's slightly higher than the road. And then I can press E to extrude, and we will extrude that down there into the road. So then just hover your mouse over this object and press L to select the link vertices, and I'm gonna press seven on the numpad to go to top view. So I can now press Shift D, and then click with your mouse wheel and constrain it to the x-axis and I'm going to stick it kind of about there so that um, the amount is the same in between them so right about there so because we duplicated this and moved it over in one action I can now press shift R and shift R will repeat the last action and that way it'll be the same amount of space in between the squares so I now want to put the same crosswalk over here so I'm just going to hover my mouse over these objects and press L to select all the linked vertices and then I'll press 7 on the numpad for top view so I can press shift D to duplicate let's bring it over here I can press R to rotate and let's type in 9 0 and enter to rotate it over by 90 degrees and then I can press G to grab and just stick it about there so inside that square right there just kind of stick it right there and try to make it about even so like that all right so we are almost done with this street but you can see right here if you go into edit mode here on the side there is that extra face there so I'm just going to select that we'll press x to delete we're going to delete the faces and then over here select that we'll press x to delete and we're going to delete the faces so that's deleted and then if we create more roads and we kind of put them together that way they'll be able to be there in the center and there's not going to be any extra faces in there and I'll show you how to duplicate the roads and kind of create your own city um, after we create all the pieces. All right, so then right here, if I click on this object, I want to rename this object. So I'm going to rename it in the outliner to intersection. So let's press Control S again to save, and we are done with that piece. So to create the straight road, I'm going to use the same piece. So I'm going to duplicate it and then just change it. So I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate, and then I'm just going to press Escape so it hops back to the center. So I'm going to click on this first intersection road, and then I'm going to press H to hide that object, and then click on the second intersection road, the one that we duplicated, and I'm going to double click on it to rename it and I can just call this straight road all right straight road so I can now tab into edit mode and I want to delete most of the things here so I'm going to go right here to the vertex select and then I'm going to press Z move my mouse over and let go to go into wireframe and I'm going to press B for the box select and I'm going to box select all of this right here and then I can press X to delete and I want to delete the vertices so we've deleted almost everything um, let's go back into the solid view and we have deleted almost everything so what I need to do now is press A to select everything and you can see there it is but it's just flat and there isn't any faces so I'm going to press E to extrude and I'm going to extrude this on the Y axis and I'm going to push it into the mirror all right let's go back into rendered mode so that we can see that so now that is looking like a road and so we have this sidewalk here and that is going to be the same exact length because we duplicated it from the intersection all right so that's good um so what I want to do is actually apply the mirror modifier because I don't want to use the mirror so I'm going to click right over here on the modifier properties and then just click on the mirror and then you can click on the drop down and click on the apply button to apply that tab into edit mode now and you can see that is all applied as a mesh so now what I want to do is I want to add some loop cuts in here so that we can make those stripes so I'm going to press Control R and then I'm going to scroll my mouse wheel so that there are two cuts and then I can left click and then right click so it hops back to the center and then right here I'm going to press Control R and then I'm going to scroll my mouse wheel so that there are two and then left click and then right click and then also right in here in the very center because we applied the mirror modifier we actually don't need this one here in the very center so I'm going to hold down the alt key and just select that ring of vertices and then to delete it you can press X and then we want to go down here and we want to dissolve the edges that way it'll delete that loop cut in there but it's still going to keep everything merged together so those faces are still connected so we can now create the stripes in there so let's scroll down here and I'm going to click on the material properties let's just make this a bit bigger so what I'm going to do is click on the white stripes and then I want to go right here to the face select so I'm going to select this face and then hold down the shift key, select this face, hold down the shift key and select that face. So you can click on the white stripes and then click on the assign button. So I now want to make the material for the sidewalk. So hold down the alt key, you can select that ring of faces, hold down the shift and alt key, we're going to select that as well. 
go over here and hold down the shift and alt key and select that one as well and then over here we can do the same thing so shift alt select that one shift alt and select that one and then over here shift alt select that ring of faces so i'm now going to click on the sidewalk material and then click on the assign button all right so there's one more road that we're going to be creating we're going to be creating a curvy road so the road is going to curve by 90 degrees and then once we create that last road i will show you how you can use all of these assets to create your own city so i'm going to use this same road and I'm going to duplicate it to make the curvy road. So I'm going to select the object in object mode and I'll press shift D to duplicate it and then press escape to get rid of it. So again, on the straight road, I want to click on the straight road and press H to hide it. And then I'm going to click on this new object that we duplicated. And then in the outliner, I can click on this, double click on it to rename it. And I'm going to re rename this to curve road. So I'm going to tab into edit mode. And again, I want to delete most of the vertices. So I'm going to click right over here on the vertex select. And then using the box select, I'm actually going to press Z move my mouse over to go into wireframe using the box select with the B key I'm going to click and drag and just select everything except that right there so I can now press X to delete we want to delete the vertices so again this is just super flat now and there aren't any faces so to extrude this out and curve it over I'm first going to press 7 to go to top view I'm now going to press the T key and the T key is going to bring up these modeling settings and I'm going to go right down here and I'm going to click on the spin tool so now that we have the spin tool selected I'm going to press A to select everything. Let's also press Control S to save this file. And I'm now just going to click and then drag and then let go. So just click and drag anywhere. And that is going to activate the spin tool. And so you'll know it's activated if the spin tool settings comes up. So right behind me, if you click on that little arrow, it's going to open up the spin tool settings. And actually, let me just move myself out of the way so we can see that a little bit better. All right, so we have the spin tool settings and we can now change this and extrude this up and spin it around. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to tell it what angle we want and I want to rotate it over by 90 degrees so to do that I'm going to take the angle right here and I'm going to type in 90 and enter and that way it's going to rotate that over by 90 degrees so we now need to tell it where we want the center rotation to be so on default it's all at zero and so that means it's going to rotate it in the very center of the world but if we start to change these values it's going to change where the center of the that rotation is so you can see right now it's rotating in the very center because everything is turned to zero so on the center here on the center X I want to change that to 2 and that way it's going to now rotate it kind of about here because the X has been moved over by 2 and then also on the Y value I want to make the Y value negative 1 so by bringing it down on the Y by negative 1 that's going to bring it down to here and then bringing the center X to 2 that's going to bring it over on the X axis to there so we've now set this as its rotation and so because it's rotating like that it's now going to rotate over by 90 degrees so that is exactly what we want now on the steps here I want to actually change this to 10 and because we've changed it to 10 now it looks a bit more low poly kind of like the style that we're going for and also because it's set to 10 I now have less faces and so that's going to work better when we're adding these stripes in the middle of the road all right so that is everything so if that was confusing you can just punch in these settings so let me just go over this again so you can just set the steps to 10 and that is going to be how many times it's going to kind of subdivide this you can see it's doing it 10 times and that's going to change the resolution you can also change the angle to 90 and it's that way it's going to rotate it over by 90 degrees and then on the center X that's going to be set to 2 so it'll be over here and then on the Y it's going to be negative 1 and that will push it down here and then we can close the spin tool and then right here on these settings I'm going to click right back here and change it to the 3d cursor I believe that's the default and then I can press T to close that and there we go so let's just press Z move our mouse up to preview that and that is looking great although it looks like we need to recalculate the normals because it looks like this got flipped so I'm going to double tap the a key and then I can press shift n to recalculate the normals so now we just need to apply the materials so let's press z move our mouse up to go into the rendered view and I'm going to click right over here on the face select so let's do the sidewalk first so I'm going to hold down the alt key select that ring of faces let's hold the shift and alt key select that ring of faces and then shift alt select that ring of faces we'll do the same thing over here shift alt select that ring of faces 
and shift and alt select that one as well and shift alt select that one as well all right so now just make sure you have the sidewalk selected so click on the sidewalk within the material slots and you can click on assign all right so we now just need to do the stripes so i'm going to click on this face and then hold down the shift key and i'm going to select every other face so just like that there we go so we now have all those selected so we're going to click on the white stripes and then click on the assign button and there we have it so if i press alt h that is going to un hide everything and here are all the objects that we've created so I'm gonna press Control S again to save and you can see that the size is totally messed up these streets are really small and then we have some other things that are really big and I knew that was gonna happen because we modeled each of these thing things individually um, and so now what I can do is I can just resize everything to make it a good scale so I'm first just going to box select the roads right here then I'll press S to scale and I can type in a 10 and then enter so that is going to scale it up exactly by 10 and it is very important that I scale it up exactly by 10. Now to show you how we can build our city and build those roads, what I'm going to do is click on this button right here and that is going to turn on the snapping. And then right here I'm going to click on this button and I'm going to make sure this is set to increment. So what this is going to do is it will restrict the object's movements to increments. So if I zoom out here and press G to grab, you can see that it's kind of blocky and so it is only moving by increments. So I'm going to zoom way out here and I'll press 7 on the numpad for top view. So I can now press G to grab and you can see that we because we've moved way out, it's now going to move along the grid. So you can see it's moving over by those grid increments. So I can now select this object, press G to grab. We can stick that over there. And then let's select this object. I can press G to grab and we can move that over. So we can use this feature using the snapping to create our city. So I'm just going to snap those together. And now if you zoom in here, you can see that this looks like a road and it's connecting. And because we model these objects to a specific size, you can see that these objects are exactly two grids long this way and two two grids long this way. And also something I did notice here is that we need to recalculate the normals. So tab in edit mode on this object and select everything. And then I can press shift N to recalculate the normals. All right, so you can just continue to do that. So if you go to top view, you can press shift D to duplicate and then R to rotate. I can rotate this over by 90 degrees and then just press G to grab and just stick it in there. And then you can press shift D and duplicate that. And then also if you wanna make a really long road, what you can do is you can select this road and you can click right over here on the modifier properties. So let's click on add modifier and we can go right down here and add an array. Now, I don't want to array this back and forth. So right here on the factor X, I'm going to turn that to zero. And then on the factor Y, I can turn that to one. And so this modifier is going to duplicate the object's geometry and stick it right over here. So you can now just start to turn this count up and you can see that it's arraying that object over. And so now we have a giant road. So this is super awesome. So you can just continue to duplicate these. So if you want to make another curvy road, you could duplicate that and make sure you have the snapping feature turned on. And then you can rotate this by a 90 degrees, bring that over, stick it into place. And as you can see, I'm very quickly creating a city with different roads and all the roads can connect. So for the time being, I'm just going to duplicate any of these extra objects that we have. So I'm going to delete those just so that we have this object and this object and this object. So let's press Control S again to save. And so now I need to resize everything so that they are all the correct size. So I'm going to press B for the box select. I'm just going to box select these. I'll press G to grab. Let's bring these over and then I'll press G to grab. We're going to bring them over to the side. All right. So now we can start to resize everything. So let's first box select this right here. We're going to box select the bus stop and also we can turn off the snapping feature because I don't want to use the snapping feature right now. So I'm going to scale the whole bus stop down and then I can press G to grab. We're going to move this over. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the size of the road and then we are going to scale all of the other objects accordingly. So I'm just going to scale that down bring it over and we can just compare this to the road to create the correct size. All right, so I'm gonna use the box select. I'm gonna box select this gas station right here. I can scale this down and bring that over, bring this over to the side here. I'm gonna bring it over and just stick it right here. I think I will scale this up a bit more. All right, that is good. So let's go right over here. Let's select the stop sign. I'll press G to grab. We're gonna bring this over as well. And I can scale this down. I'm just gonna bring this over here. And then once we've scaled all the objects to the correct scale, what we're gonna do is apply the scale so that they now have a new default scale. So let's continue to do this. So I'm gonna box select this object right here. I'll press G to grab. 
we're going to bring this over into our city and let's just take a look at this. You can just stick it over on the road and just compare that to the correct size. Let's go select another object. So I'm going to just box select these objects. I'll press G to grab bring these over as well. And it's really helpful if you compare these to the sidewalk. So you can just scale these down. And looking at reference photos is really important as well to get the correct scale. So let's select the car now. I'll press G to grab. We're gonna bring this over here. I'll press seven on the numpad to go to top view. And you can kind of see the scale of the car. So I do want the car to be a bit bigger because if I rotate this car over, I'm gonna rotate it over on the Z axis by 90 degrees. You can see that I want the car to be that size or maybe a little bit bigger um, because this right here is gonna be one lane so the cars can go this way and then the other cars can go that way so I'll just bring this car over here just bring it over here let's select the trash bags now so I'll bring the trash bags over press period on the numpad to zoom over to them and also because these are using a low poly style you might want to make everything a little bit bigger than it actually would be in real life just to kind of stylize it to make everything a little bit bigger so you could do that if you wanted to let's box select these objects and I can move these objects over as well. So I'm going to select the traffic light and I want the traffic light to be probably about the same size as the stop sign, but a little bit taller. So I'll just scale that down. So let's select the house now and I'll scale this down and bring that over as well. And you could also compare the house to the size of the car. All right, that's looking pretty good. Maybe just make it slightly bigger. All right, let's select the street light. This is pretty cool. So let's just like stick the street light here on the side of the street and we can use that to see how big we want it to be. I'll just scale it down a little bit. So that's pretty good. We can just bring this over here and we're going to select the trash can. We can bring this trash can over. I'm going to bring it over here and we can compare the trash can with the trash bags. That's a good thing to compare it by. So I'll just scale that down a bit. Here's the last one. So I'm going to box select the outdoor seating. I can scale this down and I can bring it over um, and bring that over there. Just kind of see how big I want it to be. Maybe make it a little bit bigger. And there we have it. So I've just rearranged all the objects. So I want to apply the scale so that this is now the default scale of these objects. So I'm going to select everything and I'm going to press control A and then I can just click on the scale and that is going to apply the scale. All right. So we've applied the scale. Now there is just one thing that you might want to do. If you zoom in here, you can select the window object. And with this bus stop, we added a solidify modifier. But once you apply the scale, that is going to change the thickness because the scale has been applied. And so there's a new default thickness. So if you press Z, move your mouse over and go into the wireframe view, you can see how thick that is. So I'm just going to make this a little bit less thick. I'm actually going to bring that over there, see how that's looking. All right. So I like that amount of thickness. So what I'm going to do is actually apply the solidify. So I'm just going to click on the drop down and click on apply. And that's applied it. So now if I go into edit mode, you can see that it's actual geometry. So there we have it. There are all the finished low poly assets. So you can now use this to create your city. So as I talked about earlier in this video, you can use the snapping feature to duplicate these and move them over. So you can duplicate them and bring them over and put them up to each other. And you can start to build your city like that. And you could duplicate these buildings and put them different places. You could also duplicate the cars and on each car, you could make it a different color. Um, you could also do other stuff like you could duplicate this house and kind of change it maybe make it like a coffee shop or a restaurant and you could then put the outdoor seating in the front there you could also use the same method of modeling the car but instead model a bus and then have like a bus stop um, you could create a gas station there's so many more things that you could create um, but this tutorial is already going on really long so I'm going to end it here so this is all of the assets that I'll be creating in this tutorial so thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial series and again if you'd like to help support me and this YouTube channel Channel, you can purchase all of these finished assets on my Gumroad store and you can also get it if you join my Patreon. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you in a future tutorial.